<laughs> it's probably gone. Apparently, I have two viewers. Uh, hello. Um, we got to get this on TikTok before TikTok's uh, banned, right? In the U. <laughs> I know. Yeah, someone have to sort this. Out. It's probably gonna be years if it's banned, right? Uh, but uh, like, we should do it because uh, on TikTok, I guarantee we'd have at least like twenty to thirty people at the least. I think. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Easily, yeah. yeah it's almost always know. like that. There, there, there mm -hmm. are lives that have two or three, but usually they have like twenty. Even if you're just like, sit, even if like there's nothing going on, I've seen that. <laughs> hey, um, uh, by the way, um, Adam's on here. I didn't expect to see Adam Lore. Adam Lore is, is another artist who does um, comics, and uh, he sent me one this week. And I just did a little bit of a review before I came on with you, and I was going to ask him to join in. Yeah, um, go for it. Uh, if if you're okay with that, and I of course, I, what do you mean? I didn't think Ad, I, I wasn't sure if Adam would be here, but Adam, if you want to, uh, I can I can give you um, I can send you the link uh, if if you're up for it. Only if you feel up for it. I know he was he would kind of wasn't feeling very well, so if he's um, I'll uh, I'll send you a link. I'll send you that privately. I'm sending you the link um, to through Facebook Messenger. And uh, 
But um, yeah, I um, I was actually about to ask you the same thing before all this this happened. I was going to say, what what have you been up to this week? <laughs> oh me, I was sick for like a couple weeks. I like lost my voice for I don't know, like four or five days. That was pretty crappy. Right. I remember. Um, I remember you said you weren't uh, you weren't feeling well last time. So yeah, yeah, because I think. Uh, I had this cold for like two weeks ish. It was like a really light cold though. Like I, as soon as I felt it coming on, I was like staying indoors and not doing much. And then because of that, I had like, I had like this 50% of a cold for, but it lingered so long. <laughs> yeah. But as far as artistically goes, I'm trying to learn procreate better. You know, like I'm trying to learn all these shortcuts and these commands and all this shit. Cause before I was kind of oh, yeah. using it as a line art device. Mm hmm. But now I'm kind of like, you know what? Can I actually paint on this? Like, let me just try to, let me see if I can replace Photoshop. <laughs> like, and, and oh then... yeah, it's it's it can be kind of. I don't think it completely replace it. There's a few things um, mm. that the full desktop uh, art programs can do that Procreate still can't. Um, in fact, I can even uh, there's even Is there a video? another program I've started using on the iPad called Infinite Painter that I think has a few extra things that that. Um, Procreate doesn't. Well, Procreate well gets... what do you mean? What doesn't it have? Like, all I all I really need is the basic painting stuff. You know, like is it? If that's all you need, then there's probably enough there. Um, yeah, I guess. I guess a lot of it's just like learning where stuff is, and mm -hmm. so I'm kind of I'm trying to like, because like I was we were talking about this like two days ago. We had like an art hangout, and uh... <coughs> yeah, it's just just having this little device, you know, everywhere is so much easier. Hey, mm -hmm. Adam. Oh, absolutely. Hey, you guys. Hey, what's uh, up? Hi, Adam. Adam, this is Enrique. Enrique. Hey. Adam. Hey, Enrique. Nice to meet you. Oh, nice to meet you. How's it going? Just, let me see if I can turn up the Good. audio just a little bit here. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll try to talk. Does that sound better? My microphone kind of goes in and out of audio settings or something. Uh, so far, you're really good. Okay, good. You sound good. Yeah, you sound pretty clear. Um, my just in general, my my audio it just feels very low, so I'm just trying to. Um, I just have to try and listen closely. <laughs> I, I've never had this much technical difficulty in one night. I don't know. Just it feels like everything just kind of went wrong. Can you have ten people max on here, or how many people can you have on here? I think I think six for the free version, and I forget what it is for um, for the paid one. Thanks, Frank. Nice. Hey, Frank. You guys had technical difficulties just in time for me to show up. Yeah, we. I well, we we, we got them sorted now. I think. I didn't think I was going to be able to make it, but. <clears throat> oh, I'm nice. glad you're here. I did a little review of um of your book earlier. Uh, oh, awesome! I'll Thank show you. Real quick, uh, he's the uh, Adam nice. is the author of, of Toad Road. <laughs> oh, that's great. It's it's a pretty funny book, uh, Adam. This it's, that's awesome. It's biz really bizarre humor, and I was I've got to admit, Adam, I was laughing my ass off reading this. There's some really funny stuff in this. Oh, I'm glad to hear. <laughs> so yeah, that's we'll, we'll get a we'll get a plug for where to get that before the show's over. So, are you selling it on eBay or where, where are eBay? What did I just say? The Amazon. Um, I have the first issue is on available on. Um, toadroadcomics.com which is through um it actually links to i have a print on demand thing on indie planet okay and wow. the second issue right now i'm just kind of i have um copies and i'm sending them out to people if anyone's interested i still have a few copies and eventually that will be available to at um nice. toadroadcomics.com so. Toad the second one is the best so far though it's i think it'll probably be the best issue out of the series sweet it's fun it's definitely a fun book do you guys, um, has there been any, uh, I'm sorry, what, what area are you in, Adam? Like, what, where are you? Where do you live around? Um, I live in Walla Walla, Washington. Really? Washington State, yeah. Hmm. Uh, like, actually Walla Walla? Actual Walla Walla, <laughs> okay. yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Have you ever heard, like, some people don't even believe in Walla Walla. They think it's, like, a made-up. No, I knew uh, it was, I knew, no, I, I knew it was real. I just didn't, uh, I haven't heard of it since, like. Bugs Bunny cartoons, and I think right. they mentioned the Simpsons. I think uh, that was the first thing I thought of when you said that. I was like, "Oh, like the Bugs Bunny cartoons." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was thinking of Bugs Bunny, and uh, yeah, there's a joke in the Simpsons where it's like cities that sound funny, like Walla Walla or Seattle, which was like the joke, I guess. Like yeah, Seattle's yeah. not funny. Yeah, 
Kia Cuck, Cucamonga. Yeah, oh, Cucamonga, uh, exactly. Okay, yeah. yeah. Seattle. <laughs> yeah. Do, you have a, do, you have a, do you have a topic for us, Phil? Well, like I said, I was I was kind of talking about, uh, and I know we've kind of gone over this before, but um, mm-hmm. uh, just kind of with, with, with getting kind of everything organized this week, uh, I want you to talk a little bit more about... Um, as an artist monetizing your work and, and um, uh, what's the word I was looking for? Making, making um, time management, making use of your time as an artist and being productive, being productive as an artist and, and, and getting your work out there. I was waiting for one of you guys to go. Oh, (laughs) (laughs) Um, yeah. I was kind of trying to think where to go from that. Uh, just because, as I said, the, the past, uh, like I said, I had three days off and I really kind of didn't do a lot of, um, a whole lot of drawing over the last few days, but I've been doing a lot of just jotting, like some note taking on uh, what I kind of want to do. And as I said, I've been looking into actually um, starting a website again. And if it was worth putting in the time and money, putting making a website just yet, I know it probably will eventually, but because social media is so uh is so like it's out there like you can put everything up on facebook and instagram or even tiktok you put everything up there and um um, and just direct people to to uh online stores like redbubble or teespring or whatever if you want to do merch um so it's all kind of out there and i'm just looking into whether or not it's even worth making a website just yet um because it is a cost yeah, you can do. Um, I mean, maybe email. I'm try. I know for me personally, what I'm working on now is uh, email capture. I've never really tried capturing emails, but uh, I kind of mm-hmm. loosely did it for a while. Have either one of you guys done that? Or I don't even know what that is. Yeah, I was gonna like, say, I'm like, not sure what email capture is. Like, like just getting people's email addresses, you know, because uh, some people, the people still swear by it as being like, because uh, you can send an announcement out at an e- on an email. And uh, I guess, you know, those people mm-hmm. signed up at some point. That's a very targeted audience, right? It's someone that literally signed up for your, whatever you were, right? whatever you were doing. You know, even though I ignore a lot of my emails, uh, <laughs> apparently people still swear by it. Um, but I, sorry, go. I've, I've heard, uh, I've heard people talk about making like an email list. Uh, yeah. An email list. Your website. Yeah. Same the, thing. The people can, uh, the people basically sign up for it and you just make an announcement. It's not even like responding to anybody. You make up like a, a general announcement page that you, that, that people can receive in their emails. Um, yeah. I, I sold a few coloring books through that lately just because mm-hmm. I've started posting on it a lot. Like I can tell you what I did. So like on my YouTube channel, uh, I would announce this ebook on um, how, how to draw like something cute, you know, like here's a couple of right. basic, very short ebook. Well, it's like an ebook. It's like, I don't know, 10 pages. Like here's some proportions and blah, blah, blah. And I'll announce that at the end of my YouTube video. And the YouTube video was already about something, you know, drawing something cute. Um, and I, I ended up getting like a, a thousand emails like hmm. uh, a while ago. And I never really used it. So, I mean, I'm sure a lot of those are stale, <laughs> a lot of those leads. But I just started sending out an email, like, every day lately. Oh, uh, wow. Okay. Which I, as somebody recommended. I thought, like, well, if they don't like it, they can unsubscribe it because they can unsubscribe yeah. real easy. Um, and so, like, I, I sold a few coloring books from that. At least I think so because I clicked the link. And it's only, like, a small percentage that will click the link or, you know, open it, then click the link. Um, and... What I noticed was I need to get more emails, like, <laughs> like, because right. I, I heard I heard that can be some people swear by that. That's like their main source of revenue is just mm-hmm. having those leads. You know, somebody that actually signed up for a drawing lesson. You know, you know exactly that that's an interest they have had or at some point. Um, but I don't really promote my. I don't really promote that ebook anymore. I should, you know. Like the the ebook was an exchange for their email, you know. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But uh, and I'm using Chat GPT to just like write the emails because I'm lazy. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, I, Adam, like you've you've actually produced two books now. Um, how have you? I'm curious to know how you've gone about um, promoting those books. Um, you, you've got them up on the on the website. Um, 
But um, as far as kind of getting the word out, has it just been YouTube videos or, or how do you go about? Yeah, I've mostly used um, YouTube and like just social media and some stuff in person, like in town, but not really much other than that. You should try TikTok. <laughs> I have I'm tried TikTok a couple times, but it's just it's <laughs> it's not for me. I don't know. The, the something about the format it just throws me off. Yeah, it's too quick for me. But yeah, too. I, I don't blow up on there. It's like people just start a channel and get like that, like tens of thousands of views on a video or something. Mm. Yeah, sometimes it feels like uh, kind of luck in a way. I, I mean, I know it's not pure luck, but I know there's uh, that can play into it. Because I've definitely seen different kinds of people explode. Mm. It's TikTok can be a bit of a toxic environment. It's um, it can be it can pretty, be, but uh, yeah. I mean it's free to use. So I mean, that's yeah. what you're wasting is time essentially. But you can always like repost those things as a uh, YouTube Shorts because I know they still yeah. paying for those. Yep. Oh, there you go. Yeah, you I really like should. You should um, print, I've been using print on demand a lot, and I like that. Like, what, just what's it called? Something. Well, like just print on demand services. Oh yeah. Um, you know, I was I was looking at that earlier too because I, I like I had an Etsy store for a while and I was with um, oh I forget the name of it now. Uh, you can you can link it to to an Etsy store uh, and uh, it um, oh what's the two? It's not Shopify. It's the other one, Printify, I think. Is it Printify and, or is it a but, print? Printly or something, or yeah. Um, and I had one because you can actually make it, and it'll link with your Etsy store, and it'll post it. But mm. but but it costs every month to to put stuff on Etsy. So I and there's some issues there with that. But it, it's um, I found it was like really expensive. I thought just to produce a shirt, like if somebody wants to buy a shirt or a mug with your art on it, um, mm. it's really pricey, and most of and. and over 50 like like 60 70 percent of that cost is just the shipping mm -hmm. uh the, the shirt itself is like oh yeah they're only like 12 dollars shirts and we'd all wear and then the shipping on it is like 22 dollars so people <laughs> 22 dollars is that like canada oh thing? it's inc and that's yeah and i mean now it's in canada but i even in us somebody was talking about they they were trying to make make mugs for merch and the mugs are like 20 25 dollars and who's going to pay 25 dollars for a mug just because it has you know a, a little thing of your artwork on it you have to really like the artist and want want that particular piece on something in order to but order not, that but that's not on demand right you're just saying uh when someone buys it right like a percentage of that comes out is that what you're saying well i thought that kind of was on demand like if if somebody clicks on it you know they see it listed on your etsy page or your website wherever you're selling it they click on it so you're saying the profit it gets made and then no, shipped like you're saying the profit is too small you mean the profit and the profit's also tiny but even for yeah, the person yeah. themselves ordering it, like I, I, I ordered one of my own shirts through, I think Redbubble, I forget which one it was. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, it was almost 30 bucks. And that's for me, that's my own artwork getting it printed. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's, it's, you know, for other people, you know, it's going to be really costly to have that done. So I, I'm trying to see if there's, is there an, another one out there that's cheaper? Is there a cheaper way of doing it? The Amazon um, one. I think I mentioned that last time on here. Yeah, yeah. But Amazon's not easy to get onto, though. Like, not everybody can just hop on Amazon and start selling you, your stuff. But you, haven't, you haven't implied, though. Like, you know, remember I told I you? I could like, try. I, that's what I'm saying. You probably, there's a good chance you'll make it. Like, <laughs> like it, you might not. But I only have might. 145 people on, on YouTube. I, I, and and I'm the YouTube doesn't matter. YouTube's, on... not, YouTube's not connected to Amazon, though. Um, that's I, true. I, like I said, what I had heard was some people with like almost nothing made it on there. So mm. I'm saying, like, I know yeah. that's possible. Uh, Adam probably could. Adam's got a fair decent following on his uh, on your YouTube. Mm -hmm. As you said, it's not YouTube's not connected, but um, yeah, I have that, um, a Redbubble store. Okay, yeah. it's I have a link that goes there. It's called ToadRoadStore.com. But oh, okay, like you said, like the most of the stuff the prices are pretty high and you you get kind of a teeny percentage of it but it's just kind of it's awesome to have it out there i've mm. like ordered products just to kind of test it and give to family and friends and stuff but hmm. right. it's it, the cost is so it's, it, it's almost like unless you're getting like stickers or magnets or something which is pretty a pretty reasonable price and pretty fair mm. deal 
like trying to do a t-shirt or but they have all kinds of crazy stuff on their like yeah bath bathroom mats and like, oh, know, yeah, shower know, curtains, like anything or... you think of yeah but yeah i i liked I like i'm less concerned about making profit off of it rather than just i like that i have it available and even if i'm not um able to do anything that day like people can just go there and order it but right. it, there the downside is you're it's like trying to make profit off that is just unrealistic unless you're pretty famous or something right yeah yeah you need a way to get them there i guess right which would probably be the uh <laughs> tiktok or whatever <laughs> Uh, it was something like that, some sort of social media. It would, it would be like one source of income. I, I think they, they always say diversify your income, so you have multiple income streams, and that would, that, that would, that would only be one source. But yeah, it would. Uh... I mean, I know, I know, I know I'm going to sound like a promoter or whatever, but I know the uh, <laughs> that BJ Dell podcast. He recommends having seven forms of income, like for an artist. Is that right? Eh? Yeah, he recommends at least like seven to seven. Uh, wow. Yeah. I'll have to have a look for that. I'll, I'll see if I can go back and, and find. I'm gonna write that down again. Yeah, it's through, it's through my podcast app, and then just you just look up podcasts and you look up his, and um, they're short too. They're like 15 minutes each or something. Okay. Enrique, is that like passive income streams? You mean like just like side stuff or? Yeah, yeah, like stuff like where full time jobs, obviously. <laughs> yeah, from, from from his story, it was. Um, from his stuff, it would be like selling what I'm trying to do now, like sell kids books on KDP and Kindle direct publishing. So like okay, it's passive yeah. in the, it's passive in the sense that I uploaded the file once. Right. And it's mixed into Amazon and I don't have to, yeah. uh, you know, uh, it's not like a commission. Right. That's, uh, and then um, he sells once shirts. Couple, yeah. 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 And he sells shirts. And then uh, I mean, like for me, I have like Skillshare or I guess YouTube can, YouTube's not really that passive, though. I mean, it's kind of passive, but uh, I mean, it's just, it's just something you can kind of get rolling, right? Like, if I can't work yeah. for a month and I get sick, there's something coming in, I guess. Yeah, that's one of the things that I like too about, like, not to go on and on about print on demand, but it's like, I work because I have health issues. So it's like, I worry there's going to be times, like, I would love to get a stack of books and be sending it out to people and things like that. I've been doing that a little bit, but <laughs> I just, I can't, like, reliably commit to something like that so yeah i don't know who does like only uh what do you call it only commissions or something like that because I, I guess that would be what i used to think i'm like only commissions that sounds like i'm like horrible <laughs> <laughs> like only like a, or something well, i don't i don't i mean i, I meant like patreon is also something right i I've, I've tried patreon but it got really hard to do it yeah, I was I was going to bring that up as well as I was looking at Patreon. Um, I, I was actually really starting to seriously look into uh, OnlyFans. Um, no, <laughs> no, no, is is no, um, no. The one that you you were on for quite a while there. Um, Skillshare. Yeah, I'm still Skillshare. on there. Yeah, Skillshare. Until I saw that video that Skillshare is now like they they changed the whole payout plan and and people are really upset about this apparently that they're they've lost half their income wait for what though oh is that because of the of the uh affiliate stuff i i guess um Cause I, I know a I, link yeah because i know you used to you did send me a link yeah i, I forgot i didn't check it out because i figured i knew what it was it was a uh, they changed well i know the biggest change it might not be this but i remember the biggest change they made was if I was to get someone to sign up to Skillshare for that free, you know, it's free for them for like a month or something like that. Right. And they don't, have, they don't have to go through with it. They just sign up for that free, whatever. I would make 10 bucks for every person that did that. And, you know, when you're a big creator, that would make you a lot of money. You sure. know? But I barely got anybody to sign up, in all honesty. <laughs> so sure. I didn't really care. So mine didn't change, you know. Yours didn't change it. Uh, no, I, apparently this is just this was his um, September, right? His full, yeah. He, he was showing his monthly income and how it dropped when they changed their whole system of how they paid out. If he uh, was getting it through those memberships, though, I mean that would be a huge drop, you know, because I I saw someone else make like most I, of their income on on that stuff. I don't think it was, but I could be wrong. Yeah, maybe it's another one. Into it again. That, that's still pretty passive, though. I don't. I don't know. Uh, T O G. That was his name. Who was it? 
Uh, his name is is Teal Chi, uh, I believe. Uh, he's um, um, he's from uh, South Korea, I believe. Okay. No, or is it from Singapore? My 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 mistake. Could be Singapore. Uh, okay. But he does all his videos in English uh, because he has a bigger American audience. But um, he he goes around his city and will will paint um, different areas of the city. Um, there's a name for it. I forget what you call that. Where you where you Murals? go around you paint. No, no, no. You just you just do little watercolor um, urban sketching, uh, urban, oh, urban really? sketching, and cool. he uh, his stuff's really interesting though because it's a very loose style, um, but very colorful. And he always does reviews on paints and whatnot. He has a second channel that is also for tech. If you're doing stuff like re reviews, um, um, mm. drawing tablets and iPads and things like that, where he talks about, but related to art, art related stuff, because he'll sometimes take an iPad and he'll, he'll do an urban sketch on the iPad. That's and he also has, um, he has a really good Patreon following. He does private lessons on, on Patreon where he'll, he'll show a little sample of it on YouTube, but then he'll do the whole, whole video mm -hmm. on, on Patreon. And I guess he does pretty good with that. And so, but he also had Skillshare, and he says his Skillshare lessons dropped considerably. He was getting like he, he is he on Udemy job. or anything like that? Because you can just repost the same ones on uh, other. I, oh I never yeah, found... I don't. Yeah, you may have, but have you tried posting stuff like that, Adam? Like uh, lessons on drawing or something? I feel like maybe everyone's mm, dabbled a little. On that. Very minimal. I was thinking about it, but it's like it looks. It seems like a lot of work. Like that, it would be an awesome way to try to do something. I've I've mm -hmm. done a couple little tutorial videos on YouTube, but mm -hmm. I haven't like I haven't put much time into anything like that. But it's it's definitely something I was considering. I'm trying to. Thing sorry. Here. What were you saying, Phil? Oh, sorry, Adam. I have like a second. Were you showing something? Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, um, when we were talking about some of the um, Redbubble stuff. Oh, there we oh, go. Oh, nice. That's All right. Cool. Okay. Yeah. I don't have a Redbubble. I should just get one to to have. Sorry, I didn't see that right away. Sorry about okay. that. I forgot about some of this. I put some like um, AI stuff on here too. A couple of these are like AI stuff. Oh. Like, right when it like first came out, I was like, oh, I'm going to put it on this. I'm going to put it on that. <laughs> oh, wow. But, I tried to use the AI with the coloring books that I'm doing, but um, I, I okay. guess it doesn't get line art very good. It's pretty crappy on line art. Yeah, <laughs> it kind of is. <laughs> Um, th they're rendering for, like I said before, their heads are when renderings are good, but not the, mm. cause, uh, yeah, it was just me fixing it up. I noticed I was like, okay, I can just do this from scratch. Some of these oh, are like, nice. I do music as well. Some of this is like album art from my music. Oh, that's like a collage. It's cool. Is that a collage? Yeah. It's just, a oh, collage. neat. Yeah. That's neat. Yeah. I actually did sell a whole sticker on, uh, uh, on red bubble so i have, oh, really? I have, a, I have something like a buck 50 sitting in my account coming to me <laughs> nice <laughs> so yeah it was a little dragon silly goofy dragon thing that somebody bought stickers of nice phil but, did you this is off topic kind of did you ever figure out how to get um tiktok live without getting to a thousand people did you ever try looking it up i i did um it's a hit and miss thing you can try uh, applying for it and saying something doesn't work and okay. some people have gotten away with it and they've like they've kind of went oh it must be a technical error and they, something clicks and they've gotten through i seems huh. to me i did try it once and it didn't work okay and so some people have tried it and it's worked some people it doesn't it just hit and miss yeah because i was wondering why i saw some people live and they had like 10 followers i'm like what is that like i don't know I guess they tried it with their second account and it like paid I managed to work. It's not often though, but I do see people like that. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's it's sort of a little bit people are really annoyed about that and they've been complaining to TikTok to that for a long time, and that's why um what? Uh one guy uh, I know he's he's not far from me, he lives in Toronto and he likes doing debates on Wait, on, you say Toronto? Uh, you mean Toronto, Canada, or you mean Toronto? Yeah, Toronto, Canada. Okay, so I thought you said not far here. from me. I was like, is that really far? Like, oh no, no, Toronto, Ontario. Oh, okay. So no, he um he likes doing debates, but he was getting mad that all the people that kept wanting to come in and and have a debate with him had under a thousand followers. So he set up a whole Twitch account, and he mm -hmm. would he would stream simultaneously. He would stream on TikTok and on Twitch, and he would say, "Hey, listen, if you want to come on and debate." Go over onto Twitch. You don't need a thousand followers. Just click the invite thing and come on, and we can talk. And and it would stream simultaneously to Twitch and uh, and to TikTok. Okay, 
Wow. So that was how he got around that. I, I, like I said, that's still on my, I got I want to, I want to split the camera in two. I don't know. I mean, I've mm. seen people try to. Yeah. <laughs> I've um, seen them put a mirror. Have you seen that? I've seen people put like a mirror. Oh, I've seen that. Yeah. I've seen people do that. I, is it through um this is i'm getting all the names mixed up is um stream labs i think has something i'd have to look into that a little bit more stream labs is very much like obs um there, there was there was a bit of a, a a legal lawsuit because they were originally called stream labs obs and then obs was kind of suing them for, for using their name so they had to drop the obs part but stream labs which i actually prefer over obs it's a little more streamlined yeah. um but Streamlabs doesn't work with StreamYard, unfortunately. StreamYard is meant to work with OBS. Um, but I think Streamlabs is where Streamlabs has sort of a connection with Twitch. And I think they're the ones that you can also set something up to if, if you want a dual screen. I, th I think. Don't quote me on that 100%, but it's something I'd have to look into. Streamlabs. I can try yeah. to look for that. I was also going to say, I, I always thought that if you made, I mean, maybe you only had that one funny video in you, but like, if you do like funny videos, that does really, really well. I've seen art accounts where all they have is funny videos. Yeah, I um, and they have very you know, few, and they explode on, especially on TikTok. You know, I got a lot of viewers on that one. That 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 Batman, Superman one, or Spider Man one that I was doing as a joke. I got a lot of viewers. That thing has like three, four thousand views. I, I only got maybe a handful of extra subscribers mm -hmm. though from that. I didn't get much. Maybe if I did more like that on a regular basis. That's I what like, I mean. If, if you did more like that on a, yeah, a regular maybe basis. Maybe people will start looking for them. Maybe that's the only thing. I have to come up with something again. <laughs> that was I a, know, that's a hard part. moment thing. Yeah, that's a hard part. But, I saw some, some there's, there's a girl from Art Center, and uh, I can't remember what her screen name was, but she does funny videos like that. Mm. Um she only has like 20 videos up, but they have like millions of views because they started just piling up at some point. Right. Um, some people. Yeah, it kind of made her whole, them. but you, you can parlay that into like, you know, click the link for the merch or something. You know, you can yeah. definitely do that for, for real, I think. But it's hard. I tried one of those videos, but it's like really hard. I have to narrate and shit. Not, not so much funny, but just try to narrate it. It's just, I don't know. It's oh, a lot yeah, of work. Kind of, it is. Um, something I, I, I know I want to I've got to kind of try and work on too is balancing the time to actually make art and then actually putting right. putting it out there um, I feel like there's no balance <laughs> the, the, yeah I feel like I've been drawing like this 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 crap for uh, my the kid uh, I, like Adam like all I'm doing right now is uh, trying to create more kids books kids coloring books uh -huh. for for Amazon and I don't have time to draw for myself at all. It's just been, you know, cat playing soccer, bullshit like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all I've been drawing. Like, I haven't drawn for myself in, like, like since the beginning of the year. So, like, Did you, you said had a pretty... you, were, you were trying out AI stuff to assist you with that? Um, I was. I was. And then... Um, I just didn't get much results with it. Uh, it the, the line was chunky and gross. Uh, I mean, yeah. it, was, it was always a little bad and I found myself having to clean stuff up and sometimes it would do weird. And I was just like, it's, it's easy enough to draw it, I guess. I mean, in a way it, I say easy and yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I feel like I'm also getting better at line art. So I'm like, why? I guess there's, there's benefit to that. I just, I'd rather just do my own shit, but you know, it's yeah. yeah. Like how clean can I get this line art of a cat? <laughs> so, <laughs> You it's had a fine. pretty big goal set, though. You want how many did you want to do by the end of the year? Like it was well, okay. I mean, I said a hundred, but that's unrealistic. I would say I want at least fifty because it's fifty-two weeks in the year, and I have about eight of them right now. And uh, okay, that that some sounds, some yeah. are some are quicker than others because I tried this other one that was like that took me a while. Um, but uh, it makes me like twenty bucks a month right now lately, so that's Jeez, good. Right? That's all right. It's something. It's something. It'll build up hopefully. Um, and that's like from the BJ Dell thing, right? That guy who, and he, because he makes like ten grand a month off those coloring books, because he has hundreds of them. <laughs> oh wow! Um, but uh, especially when you get to holidays, right? If you do a bunch of like Christmas ones and Halloween ones, and uh, oh yeah, you know, I'm gonna probably do an Easter one soon because that's coming Definitely. up. And, uh, Easter yeah. rabbits. Yeah, so that that that's kind of my plan to have like, just to just to get them out 
and do them. And then, yeah, at the same time, I started using um, like the email list just to get people to mildly take a look at them, you know. Enrique, have you done any, um, I guess they call it adult coloring book stuff? Uh, adult coloring book? I did one because I just started this like in, uh, let me see, what, what is it? Is it February? Uh, yeah, it's just okay. So, out, yeah, yeah. I started in like January something, uh, but oh, okay. uh, I did do one adult coloring book. I, all I did was I looked at, I looked through Amazon because it was going to be on Amazon, and I looked through uh, one that was selling really well, and there was an easy looking one where mm -hmm. it had a bunch of swirls on every page, but it just had like in big bold letters, you know, "fuck you" or something. <laughs> like it was like just a. <laughs> bad a cuss word coloring book. Oh, yeah. so so i made one of those uh like two weeks ago and uh hasn't sold any but you know i don't know i mean those things they seem at they seem to be selling at random right now that's the way i'm seeing um but cool. um i guess the big part of that is that you don't really have to advertise too much of those because they're on amazon and they're gonna people will either see them and not like it or see it and like it yeah do you find how long does it take? Like once you finish a coloring book and you you have like submitted it to Amazon to be like available on there, like how long does it typically take? It takes. Uh, so like I was telling Phil this uh, before, I think I was trying to work on one beginning of last year because I saw a video on how to make one like every step of the way, oh. and uh, I don't know. It took me like five months because I kept procrastinating. I kept putting it aside and just like this is dumb or. So it took me five, the first one took me five months. And then I saw that it sold two randomly, like three months after I put it up. And I was like, oh, okay, that's weird. Maybe there's something to this. So then I took me a month to do the second one. And then the third one I did in a week. And now it takes me roughly a week to do them. Now I'm just getting faster and faster. Just like, oh, it's nice. just, I, mm -hmm. I think it's just the mental, like anything, right? The mental, uh, I don't know what it is. It's like it feels like you're uh, like I'm pushing through a parking brake in my brain, and yeah. now that par that parking brake's no longer there. Um, and so I memorize. Once you, hmm? once you finish something, it it will process through Amazon pretty quickly. You're saying? Oh yeah, through okay. So the process through Amazon takes me. Uh, it takes like two days. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You go to KDP. Have you ever done that? Kindle Direct no. Publishing. No. Hmm. I didn't hear. Sorry. No, I didn't. I have. Oh. Yeah, yeah. If you go to, uh, you just look up KDP Amazon. Um, you upload like the PDF, and then you upload the PDF for you know the inside, and you upload the PDF for the uh, the cover, and the, um, and then yeah, it's pretty easy. I mean, uh, I think if you Google, like if you Google it, they'll show you the whole process. The only thing that's hard about it is like the measurements. That's the only thing. That's, oh, okay. A pain in the ass but like if you have a video walk you through it like there's a bunch of them on youtube um yeah they, they it's real simple so like yeah i got everything everything's pretty quick that's now that's awesome for i guess for some reason i thought that amazon kdp particularly takes longer than other places for some reason but i guess I was no wrong. no well for well maybe it's not on these maybe for like a legit book um i feel like a coloring book's pretty simple to uh Oh, do you, you know, think it might be different? Like if you're doing a novel or a graphic novel? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure that would be different. Yeah, I, I would okay. bet. This is uh, all they got to do is flip through it, right? And they're like, okay, everything yeah. measures out. Okay, cool. Nothing inappropriate. All right, cool. I mean, if I put it for kids, nothing inappropriate. Right, right. Um, and then yeah, you usually think no more than two days. Nice. Um, but uh, yeah, I recommend it highly. It's it's cool. Uh, I, I'm trying to fix my own website. It has a huge error in it right now, so I hired somebody from Fiverr to fix it. Phil, I was thinking about that. Oh, is that right? Eh? Yeah, yeah. There's a huge error where if I update it, it will not look this. It will not look like what it's supposed to look like on my phone at all. Oh, geez. And I was like, uh, this doesn't work. So they're, they're, they're I think trying. I used to have that problem way back. I used to be with something called One on One uh, for for. Um website uh -huh. and it was actually really it actually wasn't bad i liked one and one they were they were really inexpensive but is that like squarespace or kind of yeah similar similar idea but i remember at the time this is going back about four or five years now i, I had that problem with you would make the website but when it when you open it up on on your phone or your um 
uh, tablet, it's something just didn't look uh, quite right. It's supposed to be, it was supposed to be optimized for that, but it never quite looked proper. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, I delegate so much if uh, I delegate whatever I can. So like, hmm. I know enough web design to fuck my website, but website up. So I just kind of like, just, uh, whatever I can't do, I just pay somebody to do it. Nice. You should do, you should do that too, yeah. Phil. If you, if you run into issues where you like, <laughs> what just, just pay somebody to, well, okay, like if you have like... a vision in your mind, do what you can, right? And mm -hmm. then if it gets to something where, I don't know, like a coding error or you just can't get something to work, instead of spending like what I did, I used to do, like spending like three or four or five days trying to look up that one oh, thing, yeah. I just literally pay a guy like $25 to do it for me and like time is money. You know, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And something yeah. like that. Yeah, if I can get somebody to do it. For some reason, I really don't like um, the process of scanning physical pages. So I love that I can just go and pay someone to do that. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like a, like kind of like you were saying, like a mental block sometimes where it's like, I'll get a comic done and then I'll just have it. And I don't want to physically sit there and scan the pages and <laughs> format all that crap. And just, it's, it's worth it to me. Like, I don't know. I, I, it seems like some artists don't have that philosophy though. They don't like want to pay someone to do like the menial tasks and, I don't yeah, know I think why. that's that's a mistake, right? I think I, I think I told me this. Uh, creative people like doing things themselves, like everything. Um, oh, yeah. Kind of, you spend time doing a lot of stuff you don't want to do, unless unless I like doing that stuff, then that's fine. Yeah, I was talking to Phil. Uh, I think it's, I said this a long time ago. I knew a lot of uh, what is it called, master of none. Uh, I forget the phrase. Where you know a lot about, you know a little bit about that's everything. Cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I knew a lot of artists like that here. We used to do a lot of shows with uh, artists like that that did everything. And they were just like, even if they're good artists uh, drawing, like, you know, their video editing was not that good. And their <laughs> their photo editing was not that good either. And like everything else is so bad because they did everything on their own. <laughs> I remember that a lot. Um, yeah, I forget. I forget the phrase. I know what you mean. Some, somebody can do everything, but master of none of it. Yeah, am I cutting out? By the way, yeah. are you guys? Okay? What's that? Am I cutting out? I think you're fine. Okay. No, you're fine. Uh, okay, cool. my, am I? Is something happening with me? Or I was gonna say, Phil, you were slowing down. That's why I'm like, oh, maybe I'm also. Oh, slowing down. I don't know if it's maybe the distance from the mic. I don't know. But. Um... Yeah, I, I was gonna say with Phil for you, like just yeah, write down what you want to focus on, right? And just do that. Do that. Are you gonna do the Crocs with socks thing first? Or are you gonna do the, the website first? Or what are you thinking? I I'm I'm not sure yet. Uh, I'm still kind of juggling all that around. Um, you just pick one thing. Like definitely don't do it all at once. Yeah, uh, like me and yeah. like me and waste <laughs> years. <laughs> like I've wasted a long time, a lot of time. The only thing, as I said, with Crocs with socks, I can't really, I can't really make a whole lot of money from that. I can't really promote it, and if I do, I have to be really careful. Do you really know that though, so, for a fact? You, you don't really know, right? I mean, I, I don't know if it's something I want to push my luck with, right? Like I, I uh, uh, are you saying it doesn't sound as marketable, Crocs with socks? No, cro Crocs, when I started the idea, I thought Crocs was just a descriptive term for the item. I thought it was honestly just like, you know, like shoes, socks, sandals, yeah. Crocs. Oh, no, Crocs, Crocs is an socks, actual like full shoes. company. Shoes, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, I see, yeah. Yeah, Crocs is a full company. Like that is the name of the company, Crocs. And it's a business. They've already actually taken Walmart to court over some situation with their damn things. But um, I... I so when I started, when I saw that, I thought I can't go promoting a book called Crocs with Socks because the whole story is about uh, the whole story is about th this old man who who decides to to wear a new pair of Crocs and and yeah. how it's sort of they and he wears a tacky pair of socks with him, but he doesn't care. He just goes out anyways, and people kind of make fun of him, but he kind of doesn't get it. He's just so thrilled and happy to to wear them that. That he just he's just goes out and doesn't he goes out shopping and and it's just living his life with with wearing these these terrible socks with these terrible Crocs and um, 
it was just this short little story I had in mind and, and I was going to make a children's book out of it, but I oh. don't think he, I, that would be a little bit dangerous to kind of try and publish a book on that on, yeah. with a company name on it. Just put the, uh, we uh, talked about this, just spell it differently then. Yeah, I know. It's... Well, Big Bad Mama is on here. Oh, hey, what? Big Bad Mama. He oh. comes here. I should do a definitive guide to kaiju films. <laughs> yeah, why don't you do that? You know, I, I've actually have sort of written something like that. And I even did some YouTube videos with a friend of mine a while ago. But I think so many people have done that. Uh, so many people have, have actually like, if you ever want to find anything like that, that's like out there. But, um, uh, but yeah, I mean, I've thought about doing something like that just for fun and putting it up online. But I think so many people have done that. Yeah, no, but, uh, that means, you know, there's a market, though. It doesn't mean uh, people are sick of seeing it, though. You know, like if uh, every single thing I've done on YouTube uh, has been done before, there's like nothing mm. that hasn't been done before. You just It's a good thing when a lot of people do it. But yeah, I mean, I would, I would, I've, I've even got books, books here, there's some that, that are, are 20 years old that were written before the, the, some films were even made. So. <laughs> <laughs> you should. I've got. Is there a go? Hmm? No, no. You, go you ahead. should. You should. You should debate on doing something on KDP. I think it'll show you how easy to. Oh yeah. Putting right. something out is just like I feel like even after doing this is like oh wow it's really easy to put something out there maybe I'm sure it'd be harder to self publish it fully yeah. but uh, I'm saying like it gets you in the rhythm you know maybe you right. could put maybe put like a coloring book of your own that you that's easy for you to draw i don't know because because i'm sure you yeah. have a lot of stuff already i thought about that sure i thought about doing like a kaiju coloring book you should yeah. i have to be a little bit careful because toho um will comes after anyone and everyone if you put godzilla in anything i toho would not put godzilla just, in it i would not put yeah, godzilla in it <laughs> it would have to be anything that's out of the toho studio they 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 will come after you. Well, you can just uh, make it up. I mean, it doesn't have to be. Like, yeah, I have to kind of make up some new new funny goofy ones or something like. Them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I don't mean like. Uh, yeah, you can't do that. I couldn't do like a Mario coloring book. I don't think. Um, I have a feeling. I, I don't know. Do you know something actually that did come to mind this week? Um, remember, I, I did. It was kind of a fluke that I ended up making this, but I posted a while back. I did that. Um, retro looking comic of detective gary and snoops his dog snoopy snoops. or snoops snoops it's called <laughs> is it take on gary... snoopy no 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 it's not snoopy <laughs> snoops okay it, it was you you um you must remember when i posted that eh? it looks like a gold key comic i might have Did I, I think i reposted it right yes yeah that was the one that you couldn't for some reason didn't have it didn't have the link on the bottom to repost it it didn't have there's a, a lot there's airplane. i don't know what's up I don't know what's up with your Instagram, but I, I have that happen a couple of times when I tried to yeah. share stuff. It will not share it. It will not share it to my own story. Weird. You're not like, seeing the little airplane at the bottom? What airplane? It's it looks like a little V. It looks like a paper. No, no, airplane. I I see I see it and it'll it'll come up with everything to share it. I can send it to another human. I just can't post it to my own story for some reason. And it's like almost all your posts. I don't know why. Really, it's usually the first one right at the top. The action, it just I know, I know. It's you all, want it to share be, this? It yeah. should be the one right at the top, but it, it just is not present when I try to share your posts for some reason. But um, I've tried it for my yeah, few accounts too. That's bizarre because I can do. I've done that with other people's. It's, yeah, I've done it. I do it with everybody's. <laughs> yeah. I cannot do it with yours. I can do it with everybody's, and I've done it from other. Couldn't do it from uh, other accounts because of... you're welcome to actually. If you ever want to do that, you can save the image and throw it up. Yeah, no, that's true. I, I figured it'd be easier though, but, like you know, to casually share it, you know. Like. But I, I've the funny thing is, I, I did that just as kind of a fluke, and I've had a couple of people t telling me that you should make a comic about that, and I'm like, that's kind of not. I mean, I could have, I, I could do that, and it'd be kind of fun, but that's kind of not what I want to do as a comic right now. I still have Star Tales batting around in my head, and mm. um, um, oh, Adam's got, Adam, you put something else up. You're muted there, Adam. I'm sorry, I forgot I was muted. Um, I did this illustration a while back, and I actually didn't know what it was from. And I thought, Phil, that you oh. and oh, or cool. Big Bad Mama right, re might recognize it. Because I just like, it was like randomly yeah. suggested in my YouTube videos. It's one of these like kaiju. Yeah. Uh, 
Godzilla things. But I don't know anything about that genre, but it was like I love I loved I don't know, I just stumbled upon upon this. At like, first I thought it was Monster Zero, but that's not. Um I know what that's from. Um that's from a Gamera movie. There were twins in a Gamera movie? Are those twins? I don't know, I can't tell. Yeah, but they were evil. They were oh. the one where he fights the one with the blade on his head. Um <laughs> I forgot what that thing's name was. We're on or something. G U I R O N. Oh, Enrique, yes. are you into kaiju stuff too? Yeah, yeah. I don't memorize yes, stuff, yeah. but I, I see, I like collect them. At least I collect the Godzilla, Gamera, and, uh, well, I guess there's only a few King Kong movies, right? There's like six or something. What, King Kong? Yeah. Yeah, I think there's only like okay. six or something. I think I'm only missing one. That, what is it? That sequel that. I don't remember. I, I, at least a physical disc of it. I don't have it. Yeah, it is. It's from the, the those are the evil twins from Gamera versus Guiron in 1968. It was when he he flies the two kids to another planet. Yeah, the, the girls bring the two boys to another planet, and they're pretending to be nice, and they end up being evil. And there's the monster with the blade on its head, and that's when Gamera. Fights. It's so well. It's so random. How just the other day, it was just a couple days ago, I was reading, you know, through Wikipedia or something about. There used to be these theories that there was um, a, like a copy of Earth on the other side of the sun. Like people actually believed in this in oh, hmm. cultures and stuff. I was talking about too doppelganger. Um, yeah, and there was a couple. Yeah, there's a couple different names for it. Journey to the Far Side. Yeah, there's two names. Sorry, go ahead. And um, I just like I, it was completely unrelated to that that film or kaiju stuff or anything. And then I kind of just stumbled upon. I was like, oh my gosh, that's what that random picture was from. But. Yeah, I thought yeah. you guys. Um, Jerry it. Anderson produced that. He's the guy who did the uh, Thunderbirds and and. Oh, nice! Um, yeah, it looks really awesome. Like it that's makes all me the miniatures kind of redone. the genre. I, it doesn't appeal to me as much, but like stuff like that, like the kind of sci-fi, like that old like '50s sci-fi look, I love so much. Oh yeah, yeah. King Kong escapes. I, I you know, I have to jump in. You know, when I was really little, I actually saw King Kong escapes before I saw any Godzilla movies. I remember that aired on TV, and I was just, I loved it, and I <laughs> sort of fell in love with giant monsters. And that was the first one I saw, just because it happened to have aired on TV when I was like six years old, and uh, it was before I actually found Godzilla movies. I saw that thing. <laughs> nice. But yeah, man, I completely. I was doodling where we're doing this, and I completely fucked up my shit. Oh. <laughs> I got to learn procreate. Oops, I just sorry. changed it all. I was like, <laughs> um, learn to draw and talk at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was gonna say you guys do that here on live, right? Sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll come on and just kind of chat. We'll just sit and chat away while we're working on something. And I was gonna say, Phil. So I mean, I mean, the, uh, the sun. yeah, you got you got to pick one doppelganger. Product. Is it called Doppelganger, the movie? The British, I think the British title is Doppelganger and the American title is Dark Side of the Sun or Far Side of the Sun. Nice. Journey to the Far Side of the Sun. Because I had a friend of mine, he used to be, um, I used to, we, we were kind of roommates for a few years. Um, uh, his name was Doug, Doug Pelton. Huge fan of Jerry Anderson. Like he actually has one of the puppets. He, he won in an auction in his, in his, in his place. He has mm -hmm. miniatures and stuff all over the wall. Huge Jerry Anderson and Toho. He was a fan of them both. So, and he had that. And we watched it one, one evening. Um, mm -hmm. Weird, weird flick. Confusing ending, I remember. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, the miniature work was really amazing. Wow. That was pretty cool. Yeah, he, he loves that movie too. But... Phil, you got to pick one thing and do it. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean... I Let's pick one. Um, yeah, yeah, because I know, I know I've been there. I'm still there. Yeah, I mean, uh, so what's your one thing then, right now? What's <laughs> the coloring books? The, the coloring books. The coloring I definitely books? said it. Yeah, <laughs> I guess it's not so much the one thing, but how can I take it and, and promote? I don't want to spend forever on. It. Like, I want to work on something and be done. So, like, uh, people have been bugging me about doing like an Inspector Gary and Snoops, and I'm like, eh, it might be fun. Maybe that make make a cute coloring book series. Maybe to, yeah, instead of actually absolutely. doing like a comic book, just do it as a coloring book series. That might be cute. I mean, you could you could just put it like what I'm doing right on KDP. That's free to put on. Yeah, I, th there's no applying yeah. for that either. I don't think because I just did KDP. It. Yeah, Kindle Direct Publishing. Just go to KDP Amazon or something. Okay. Or type it in KDP Amazon. Yeah, if you just type in K KDP uh, Amazon into the Google search engine or whatever, it'll probably just come up okay. with it first. 
the first site. Um, I think you just make an account. I don't think they. I don't think they asked to approve anything either. Mm, all right. They didn't show anything. Think about. As long as it's available in Canada too, some of this stuff is like, oh, it's only like U.S. only. <laughs> Did you find it? So I actually, I'm not, I wasn't looking just yet, but I, read, I wrote it down anyway. So here. I'm oh, okay. Go. Yeah, but yeah, I highly recommend that uh, if you if you get around to it. It's uh yeah. If you made if whatever you did right, you could probably publish it. I don't really see any. I mean, put it up here. You know, I don't. I don't really see any reason. There's KDP Lulu as well. What's that? Well, Lulu is a publishing company that produces uh, with you the prints books, a oh. print on demand service for books. So, um, my roommates used Lulu before. And they were kind of the big one that was kind of the go-to for everybody went to to get their. If you have like an indie book you want to get published. Oh shit. But they got kind of expensive. I think they got a little big for their britches. And... It's too bad. I, I don't know if any other video teaching uh, platforms other than Skillshare and Udemy. Um, I, mm -hmm. I tried some other ones, but the other ones were a scam, like a straight up scam. <laughs> Couldn't find it. Which one you're thinking about there? I heard Adam was mentioning something. Udemy was one I was going to look into too, but I don't think it was as popular as um, Skillshare. Uh, yeah, those are the only two I know that I know. I mean, I mean, there's a bunch that exist. I just heard that they get very little. They're they're just so far behind the other two, you know. What are you looking at? Oh, sorry, just reading what they were saying there. Uh, okay. Slightly off topic for just one minute. Did everybody leave? I've got zero viewers. <laughs> Frank, where did you go, Frank? <laughs> Come back. <laughs> Case. He probably went over to No, what you should do is uh wait, did you by the way, here's a here's off topic. Did you um stream for like five hours or something one day? I think one night we did. <laughs> okay, I was looking at that, it just popped up like Phil stream for five hours. I was like, what? We got we all got talking one night as we were working on stuff and we just we just yeah, it was a late night. I think Adam was there with us and is that a long one? I tend to do really long streams, so and yeah. it tends to rub off on people or if I'm on, on the <laughs> Do you know I have I to be like careful because I'm on four hour streams sometimes. Oh wow. I should do that sometimes. I um yeah, I have to be careful because uh, I got a notice after that on uh, from StreamYard that I only have twenty hours a month. Oh yeah, and and uh, so on the free service, it's unlimited if I pay for it. But um, yeah, yeah, in twenty four, um, yeah, it's it's. Uh, so I I realized actually this month when I got the notice, I thought, well, I still have one more art block, so I want to keep at least two hours set aside. I think I still have about five hours. Cool. Uh, yeah. One oh, thing I do yeah. is I just use alternate um, emails to log in, so it's like just, oh, however many. Oh, email you have you have that many like you can still link yeah. to your main channel from any of your emails so yeah i have to rotate between three or, especially if i'm doing like 12 hour streams yeah they yeah the hours go quick and you i had to like, when, switch, uh, like to three or next four. time i get some like when i when i start getting a little more time off and i get my mondays off maybe we should do that we'll do like a big 24 hour stream <laughs> we'll split are you gonna it. switch from account to account or what do you <laughs> We'll split it. We can do 12 on Adams and 12 on <laughs> if you want to do Phil, that. If you have one hour left and you start streaming, you can stream as long as you want. It just oh, is that right? that cut off. Okay. Although I have, I don't know, some of those things like pushing it to 24 hours and 12 hours and things like that. I have lost a couple videos where it just it just didn't save right or it didn't transfer or something. It's oh, like, sure. I don't know. I'm not so worried about actually... push the limits of the technology or something. Yeah. I'm not so worried about posting. In fact, I even took them down. I think I switched them over to private because nobody's gonna sit there and watch a five rewatch a five, six hour video if it's I don't it's know. Just sitting... <laughs> You'd be surprised, like I maybe, but um... I mean someone's watching my videos. I mean oh. and it, the views go up like it, yeah. It, some of those long streams. I don't know though. I've always been interested. Have you ever got have you guys ever looked into how they count view like if you do a five hour stream? Oh. And someone starts watching, and then they come back two hours later. Like, do you know how they count the know. views? Like the view count for that? I, don't know. I, was, I, I know the really lives know. don't count towards you. It's your view count. It's only if they watch the rebroadcast after that it, that that time counts towards your your thousand hours or whatever that you need oh, or four thousand hours. Mm. Yeah. Huh. 
Yeah, the actual stream. So whatever people are watching right now isn't counting towards my my time. Okay, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah that be, I think you'd be surprised. People will watch those long streams. Like I they don't will, understand yeah. how <laughs> or why. Like when it's happening, that's one thing. To go back and rewatch it, it's like how would people have time to I keep figured, up with any of it? I, yeah, I I figure if I'm doing something, if I'm drawing, if I'm painting, and I keep doing something, and maybe working and talking about it while I'm doing it, might hold people's interest enough that that mm -hmm. if they can follow along with it, but. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that works. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't think I watch. Shut up to do that. The only the only long videos I watch are like debate videos, you know, because it's a back and forth. But like, <laughs> yeah. I never like I'll watch like four hour debate videos, you know. But like, I have to be I, careful. I could get into that too. And but I I'll never. But I'll never like watch. Do I don't think I watch any art videos that long. Even from artists, I'm like dying to see. Like I watch um, this guy named Dave Raposa, and I, I watch his. Uh, he'll just have like super long ones like five hour streams of him mm -hmm. painting on patreon and i'm not gonna sit there and watch that whole damn thing <laughs> i like to keep around it I don't, I don't know what you could do art wise i, I guess i forgot i'm actually set up to draw here i set this up so i could i could actually draw while i'm while we're chatting I was you hoping you would get set up with this something like this sometime. What, what is that yeah. called? What, what is it? Wait, you have to do that on what? How do you use that? This what is through street. Oh, this is through OBS. So I'd have to use OBS then, or? Um, yeah. In fact, I even figured out how to stream from your um, iPad. You can even set this up with your iPad. Really? Through the and iPad. You can go through All OBS. Right. So you can put in multiple That's... sources: your audio, your video. Um, Wait, your I can install. I just install OBS on my iPad then. Um. Or no, I, I would I would put it through a computer. If you have a computer, a desktop, or a laptop, I would recommend putting it through that way. My computer's slow, though. I don't know. Is like, it? I'm worried. Oh, about... Yeah. Yeah, that's, that that's what I was going to say. Mm. I'd rather do it through my iPad, but... Oh, but then I have to I'd look have... into that. I'm not sure if OBS will work with the iPads or not. Interesting. We should do that thing I told you about once, you know, where everybody gets on and draws on the exact same board. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, I think, could be really fun. Stream warranted is one these days. But... That's cool. Another karaoke, Another karaoke stream. stream is warranted. Oh, yeah, we, did a, we did a karaoke mega stream. Were you around for that, Phil? I can't remember. No, I, I, I think I remember catching the end of it and I missed it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, you guys are singing in the mic? Isn't that really like, does the the short out or, or, you know, like, doesn't it, <laughs> isn't it really hard, the mics on here and, I can't even remember. I think we, one of the issues we ran into was a copyright. What? Issue, oh funny. yeah, I was I was gonna say that would be the first issue is, is copyright. I don't know why I didn't even think about that. But that was the blast. <laughs> Big Bad Mama came on and and performed a rare, a rare appearance by Big Bad Mama. Yeah, we got to get his mic fixed. <laughs> we need to get a, a little fundraiser or something to fix Big Bad Mama's mic. Oh yeah. So earlier I was talking about that. Um, there was a word for the the idea that there's an Earth on the other side, mm -hmm. and it's called anti. I don't even know how to pronounce it. It's like anti anti thon or something. Let me see. Mm -hmm. I'll put it in the. It's like an ancient Greek uh, idea, but it somehow I I ended up finding out about that, and it led me to that that kaiju movie. <laughs> yeah, Where I was gonna say that sounds like a kaiju movie. Oh, I don't think that Dark Side. Uh, it wasn't a kaiju movie, but it definitely has has a lot of miniatures and spaceships and that kind of uh, thing. But oh, I can no still think of like in that one, Center of the Earth, right? Isn't that like a concept they use in a lot of kaiju movies? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Dinosaurs and yeah, like the the kaiju's came out of the center of the Earth. They just like uh... that's pretty cool. Do you play any kaiju video games, Phil? I used to play a couple years ago, like PS2. Okay. Uh, I had the Destroy All Monsters Melee. Yeah, I had that too. I had that too. I had that on the game for hours. Yeah, I love that game. They haven't made it. Well, I guess they made an uh, a DLC for some PS5, no, PS4 game, I think, that looks really good. I just haven't played it. Oh, okay. No, I haven't. I'm not familiar with that one. Yeah, they, so they made it. They made. I believe they made a kaiju game that was just generic kaijus, but they have a DLC where you can have Godzilla and all these things, and then you might as well be a Godzilla game. What's this going to Earth? What does he say here? What's up? 
Oh, okay. Well, that's entirely clip. Okay. Are you drawing a dog? I was doing a dog, yeah. Why don't you have a dog, Phil? I would love one. You know, I've, I've talked a lot about wanting to get a pet, uh, either mm-hmm. a dog or a cat. I'm open to either. Um, it's just, uh, uh, they're a lot of work, and I don't know if I really have the time and effort to put into into a pet, as much as I would absolutely love to have one. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised I don't have one by now. Then get a cat. It's also, um, it's also <laughs> cat, really, really either. hard losing them uh, when, when, when it comes, their time is up. It's, that's, Cats live like 20 that's years, just, though. You're going to be they do, yeah. screwed up 20 years from me, too. <laughs> that's great. I don't want to be in like my mid-70s and like having to go through that. The loss of something. You're gonna go through. We'll get a parrot then. <laughs> no, I want something a little more interactive with me that can sit in my a lap turtle. or sit in my food. A turtle. You want. So I miss. I do miss dogs. When I see what having dogs when I was growing up is that they're they're excited to see you. You come home and they're they're they run up to you and they lick your face and they want to. They just mm. want to be around you all the time. Where cats are kind of a little more aloof. Which is yeah. fine. I know some of them can be very affectionate. I know that, but you never know if you get one. You never know how it's how it's going to be as it gets older. And how long do um, ferrets live? Yeah, ferrets. Live I don't time. know how long those things live. There's also that that we go to conventions a lot through the year, and we go away a lot, and I go on trips, and I always want to make sure there's somebody that can look after it. Um, so if it happens that both my roommate and I are out, I want somebody that can, you know. I'm in the apartment. If I have a dog, I got to make sure I take him out every day and maybe he goes to the bathroom. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, food. like, the, the cat's a lot easier. I have a dog and a cat. Yeah. And the cat's way, way easier. You can just, yeah. yeah. It's like, also, if they, they get sick, vet bills are expensive. Why do you think of the negative of everything? Come on, just just jump in. This t- I, I know, but if they get, <laughs> I'd feel so horrible if they got sick and it's like a thousand dollar operation, and I'm like, no. <laughs> I think I told you guys this story on here once, or I told you that uh, I had a pet turtle when I was fourteen, and it ran away. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, and then when I was thirty, my dad. I don't know what happened. We started talking about it, and I found out that that turtle was actually eaten by my dog. What, it didn't oh, wow! Yeah, because oh, my dad didn't tell me until I was thirty years old. I was like, "What the hell? Why did that not?" Oh, <laughs> she told me that when I was like twenty-one. <laughs> Big Dad Mama mentioned the the Siamese. Um, I, I knew I lived with somebody with, with a Siamese that was extremely affectionate, loud. It was it would it, this tiny little Siamese that would that would squeal like an air raid siren when it was oh. upset. It just, you would hear him three blocks away, <laughs> oh, yeah. but do, he was do, very, very friendly though. He would, he would crawl pretty, up on my shoulder. And just, yeah, I kind of, do you have any pets, uh, Adam? No, I don't. No. Uh-uh. You, you don't like them or you just, just don't tell I, them. Or... I love pets, but it's like, I can't deal with pets. <laughs> I can't <laughs> deal with like the sounds and the possibility of them chewing things up and going to the bathroom and I don't know. <laughs> I love yeah. like you know I have pets of like my my family members that I visit frequently and I love to visit with those pets and I consider them family but I don't I can't mm-hmm. like sleep with dogs and cats in my house. Yeah, yeah. I used to have a turtle though. Yeah, turtle. Those are cool. I like those. Like I said, did you have a like a like the ones that are in water or the ones that are like all like by land only? Um, a couple different ones actually. One is it's called a red eared slider, so it will be kind of in water or or on land. But yeah, it would swim. It was it was interesting when I got that turtle because um it was so fast. Like turtles are known for being slow, but when they're in the water, they swim like super fast. Huh. So it That's changed true. my perception of the personality of a turtle, like just like this sort of stereotypical slow paced animal. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's cool. So, yeah, actually, yeah. Right. in my um, uh, in my comic book, um, Toad Road Comics, my the main character Ted has a pet turtle named Zorgi, and that was based on, on my pet. Uh, pet turtle I had. Oh, nice. Wait, so you what, you do? You say you don't? You only sell that book on your on your website, right? You said you don't sell it on Amazon. Um, my plan actually is to once I have enough for like a. a book collection like i want to 
to I want to put like multiple issues together as a book and get that on Amazon. But yeah, right now it's just as a um, it's kind of like a, a large comic book format. It's like magazine size. Oh, OK. On. Yeah. On, it's through Indie Planet, which is um, Kablam's print on demand service. Uh huh. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, they, they had um, I forgot to mention they had a Comic Con uh over here, like a little one. I, I didn't go to it though, unfortunately. <laughs> they had something called Rocket Con. I know you guys probably have a bunch of little ones, uh, especially in Washington, right? All the time. Um, I am like on the well, I'm on the clear other opposite side of Seattle, which is like where you might go to see something like that, or like near Portland, but. Mm. On this side of Washington, there's not a whole lot going on. Oh, okay. That's too bad. How far are you from uh, from Seattle? Um, it it's like six to eight hour drive. Oh, that's a while. Yeah, that's that's yeah. a bit. <laughs> okay, I think it's like two hours because I'm like two hours from LA, and I was like, maybe it's like that. But yeah, six hours is a bit. Yeah. Yeah, I went to the um, LA Comic Con a, a couple of well, a few years ago. Oh, you did. I haven't gone to many. Actually, that was like really the only major convention I ever went to. But oh, it was really cool to go. I kind of actually learned like I had always thought it because I mean, that's like the dream of just going to like, like it seems like the most obvious thing you would ever do if you're like into comics. But yeah. I actually did not love it. I was surprised by what did you like about it out by it? <laughs> by a lot what, of what, stuff. What, what didn't you like about it? It was well. Part of it too is like I have a I have health issues, so it was like rough on my body to do that trip and to be. It was really hot and it was just like physically exhausting. So oh, was, wow. and there was like nowhere to sit, like stuff like that was definitely affected my perception of it. But just like I don't know, I always felt like if I went to a comic con, that those are like my people, you know. Mm -hmm. And when I got there, I just mm -hmm. did not feel a kinship with most of the people there. It felt very superficial and consumerism driven mm -hmm. and besides uh, like the artist yes. alley type thing in artist alley i i would live there like i would mm -hmm. you know i would love to do that if i if my job was just to go around the world going to these art conventions and just hanging out with other artists and drawing and meeting people and sitting down <laughs> not walking around and carrying stuff oh, if no, I can... but like the whole like almost everything else mm -hmm. it felt i don't know quite how to explain it but it just felt kind of like this weird i know exactly what you're saying hot <clears throat> topic oh let's get in the line to get the, the coolest <laughs> like, limited edition thing was like seemed like the majority of the people that i encountered for some reason i don't know but it was i mean it was awesome like it was awesome to see um if i uh, can jump in because i know exactly what you're saying uh there's a there was a huge difference between um, the corporate run conventions and fan run conventions. <clears throat> Cause I, I, I love going to fan run conventions uh, because there's a lot less of that kind of corporate stuff. And, and the fan run ones, there does seem to be a little more heart behind it. And some of them, yeah. if they're really big, like anime North in, in Toronto every year is an enormous convention, but it's fan run and it doesn't have as much of that, um, it's it's completely different from say like a fan expo or a comic con, completely different. Uh, and there's lots of stuff going on. They have they have like wrestling going on over the weekend, but it's um, uh, it, it has a completely different feel to it. And there's a lot of people there that just are like like huge groups of friends. And, and there, there's little uh, what do you call it? like little panels that you can come sit in and join in and talk with people and uh it, it's there's something more enjoyable i used to like going to toronto trek years ago mm. and that went for like 25 30 years before it folded unfortunately they kind of dropped the ball on that um years and years ago but um toronto trek was one of my favorite conventions because it was a big fan run convention and they had a lot of famous people from star trek in there they had like like all the big name ones she used to go to that but it was it was a blast i miss those days um but, Is it something like it now to replace it over there? Not really. I think because Fan Expo sort of engulfed everything. Fan Expo has a one massive convention plus a lot of little mini cons through the year. Mm -hmm. um, and there is some other small. We do have a bunch of other small. There's one not far from me that comes up every couple of months. Um, mm -hmm. And um, 
Uh, yeah, it, it's it's just a shame we don't we don't have them as much as we used to. I think because the big corporate cons kind of swallowed them. Anime North is the only one I know that's the big fan run con. It's it's gigantic, uh, wow. but it's such a blast that one. Even if you're not a huge anime fan, it's just fun to go and see the crazy costumes. So they have they have that wrestling on the weekends. Yeah, um, they have they have all kinds, and the the dealer's room is gigantic. Yep, I had this. Ever... Same... Sorry, I was gonna say I had the same experience, uh, but backwards. I had a, uh, I went to San Diego Comic Con like every year since oh I was goodness. twelve years old. Mm -hmm. uh, and like I was used to the big corporate ones, and then I went to I didn't even know we had smaller ones till like it sounds crazy, but like three like right before pandemic like like 2019 i didn't know we had oh, tiny okay. ones here like one room you know um yeah. and they were great i was like wow the, yeah that, that was the first thing i noticed though everybody there uh i remember thinking like there's more like this is corn this is gonna sound really corny but it felt so passionate uh at that little one like like this person mm -hmm. really has liked whatever it is either star trek or whatever comics like their whole life they're all about it, you know what I mean. Uh, where at the other one, it's like the the big the big con. It was like I literally saw girls I saw in the club, <laughs> in the nightclub, at this convention. And I know they don't like this kinds of stuff. They just want to get in there because it's a oh, big yeah. convention. Yeah. Huh. And I was like, why are these people here? Um, so yeah, I do know. It's like a theme park or something. A big one. We, uh, we have a little tiny mini one here in Burlington. It's either um, a, like a, they call it the Collector's Con or the, I forget the name of it, something con. It's a very small one, very small, like six hours long on, on a Sunday afternoon, last Sunday of the month. They have oh, really? like, but it's a great one. You see like parents will maybe take their kids to it and it's got a, the, the dealer's room is kind of mixed with the, the artist's alley kind of thing. They overlap them. We had a new tiny like one. Them. Um, we had a new tiny one here because, like, it's like uh, uh, in San Diego, there are more, you know, more little city areas. And um, there was one called Otai Con. The, the only issue I have with the, oh, yeah. the ones in our area, it's it's like dominated by Funko Pops. Oh, geez. And I'm just like, if Funko Pops were in here, that'd be 70. That's like 75% of the booths. I'm like, can we sell anything yeah. other than Funko Pops? I'm so sick of those. <laughs> I mean, I have some. They but. creep me out, those things. I like yeah, them, but I mean, they... I was trying to think of that earlier when I was talking when I was talking about going to that comic con. It was like this huge line for the new Funko, let's the Funko exclusive or something. It was like, oh wow, <laughs> this is what it's all about, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's most of them. Definitely, but yeah, I gotta I gotta check out like a smaller independent comic comic con, not so one of these huge ones. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think I, I go to both now, but like I, I know where to where my mind is at, you know, like where yeah. the giant one is like, OK, this is going to be like like what we were saying, you know, it's crowded and, uh, you know, I'm going to grab mm -hmm. free stickers that for some show I never heard of, uh, <laughs> you know, so I, I kind of know what to expect. So I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm cool with both to be now. But um, God, I had a larger point. And I forgot it. Damn. Mm -hmm. Hey, oh, I have a question for you, Phil. Yeah, this is a this is a technical question. Since mm -hmm. I have a th I okay, I have a thousand followers on TikTok. Am I able to invite you, someone who doesn't have a thousand followers, to go live nope. with me? I'm not allowed to do that. Nope, I have to okay. have a thousand as well. Okay, okay, that's that was kind of the thing you touched. I know on that before. sucks, and that's what everybody's been complaining about. That's insane. that's why the the other guy I was telling about who does the uh, the debates the debate. the from Toronto does the debate set up a Twitch account so he can he can he can do two at once he'll he'll do he'll do the live on himself oh, that's on insane. tiktok but then he'll open up twitch and also have twitch going at the same time so he can have somebody come on twitch that's crazy okay yeah so basically say... like what we're doing here but you'd also have maybe another phone or something else doing where you could do um you could do tiktok but wait how would it how would i put it here though like I just you, want to put my phone up or something. You, like, but my yeah, my... you couldn't see. Uh, I know with JB, he does. He has his phone set up with TikTok, but then he'll have his other cameras set up through his computer to do his his debates. But because oh, they're man. running simultaneously at the same time, um, that's terrible. Uh, he can, yeah, yeah. I didn't know it was that bad. Been, 
people have been trying to uh, talk TikTok into changing that for a long time now. It's it's been a pain in the ass. Do you guys find it's easier to get that many followers like on TikTok versus YouTube, or one's easier than the other? I don't have trouble with both. <laughs> I, I had trouble with both too, but like I'm trying to think back in the beginning. Uh, I get more on Instagram. That's I've got almost 700 on Instagram. <laughs> you have on to Instagram? get what, a thousand, you said. For me, a thousand followers. I, 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 for for what well, I, I, on TikTok, I have a thousand and thousand. I don't know what I have right now. Thousand forty one or something. Yeah, so like right over that. But uh, I mean. Yes. I was just adding videos and it felt like pulling teeth, you know, like if I'd yeah. add a little video, I get maybe one follower. Um, and then I just kind of kept adding videos and I just knew eventually it would even, you know, I could see it rise like one or two followers every couple of days. And I'm like, all right, eventually. <laughs> and it took me like yeah. I don't know, a couple of years. Yeah. You um, really have to kind of keep posting on, on TikTok. I found on TikTok, you either have to, you got to either do one of two things. You've either got to be really controversial or um, you've got to be a bit of an exhibitionist. What do you mean? <laughs> uh, find a lot of people on there that if they look good, if you're young and if you're beautiful and you're willing to kind of. Young, young and beautiful. You are, def then... Definitely. Uh, it's, well, female. I don't, I haven't seen that with guys. I've seen it with females. It with uh, both. Really? I've never seen yeah. it with guys. It's fascinating. Oh yeah. Um, I remember one of my female friends joined and she was doing better than me on day one. And I was like, what the fuck is it? I was like pretty, I mean, yeah. it was like, I mean, I just know the way the world works. I'm not that crazy, you know, but it was still annoying. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yep. No, I know. That's, but that, that's the, I think TikTok's different though. That's the only place like that. I know people that, that go, I wouldn't say they go viral, but they have a lot of following there mm. because they're pretty, but that doesn't really work on YouTube, you know, or other platforms. At least. Oh not. yeah. Yeah, I would have thought mind. Instagram would be maybe kind of the same, but I don't know. I mean, if they have well, uh, if they have well taken photos, you know, like I don't, I don't think, I don't think you just have to be pretty though on on Instagram. You have to have both. You have to have good photos unless they're garbage, um, or it's blatant it pornography or something. Your, I guess it depends on where you sit in, in the social media world too. Like if if you're kind of across all the platforms and you're pretty popular, then yeah, you're gonna get. Well, man, I was telling you about that girl uh, who's like 21, who's kind of a friend of mine. And like, it's, we were we were like neck and neck follower wise for a little bit. And now she's got like, I think it was like 30,000 followers or something just because she goes live all the time. And people. Oh, and yeah. Made, yeah. 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 And she made two thousand dollars in two weeks off of because you can make you can make money off of lives if people give you presents. Right. And they're going to give a right. girl presence i guess yeah uh, yeah so so she made two grand she told me and i was like what and she's pretty wow. honest so i was like damn that's because from what i understand really like like if if you're in the tiktok creator program which is only for us and china by the way um yeah. you still make less than um you still make less than what you would off of uh youtube youtube yeah you make way a lot more yeah, you, you make way little. Yeah, I remember Mr. Beast showing his numbers and he made like, I don't remember what it was. It was like ridiculously low for him. Yeah. But uh, yeah. but yet you get more more viewers on um, on TikTok though. I I, I, know, I I know I'm wrong for doing this, but I, I've said this before. I like, I got addicted to, to trolling on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> really? Like some, some of these live videos. I don't know. I'm addicted to going through people's lives and saying something not horrible because you get banned, but like yeah. just something funny and then make them react. I, I, I got addicted to that. That's my, that's my little oh, crummy geez. time waster. Uh, I won't spend all day though. I'll probably spend like half an hour doing that. I'm like, well, that's yeah. a waste of time. Whose lives do you do this on? Random, random, right? You go in that oh, live yeah. tab, right? And you just go through anybody's. Uh, there's some guy named Jean Jacket Jeff and, He's some older guy that rambles about stories, and I'm just, you yeah, know, I'll just say something to set him off. <laughs> so it was like political stuff, or no, it's not political. It's not political. Oh, okay. I think that's too easy. I, I really, you know, you just say the opposite, whether you oh. believe it or not. I think that's too easy to troll on a political thing. He'll, he'll just, I don't know, you just tell people. I, I mean, uh, I'm not gonna say it because I just I sound like a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> Enrique, what type of uh, debates do you 
check out? Like what? Um, I, ch- um, I check out um, like um, like political debates, I guess. Like on uh, uh, there's a guy named Destiny on um, on YouTube. Oh, and yeah, you have, yeah. Yeah, and you have like five good. five hour videos, and I was like, wow, this is great. Like, just there's so many cool people. He'll just talk to anybody. Uh-huh. <laughs> I cannot believe because he's such a big user mm-hmm. now and like he'll talk to people with like a 2000, you know, person following or something like that or or uh, so I, I like I like those. Those are fascinating. You know, cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think we all all of us have that in common, um, including mm-hmm. Big Bad Mama, the uh, kind of debate mm-hmm. and interest in, yeah. in uh, debate stuff. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. It's fun to, to see most that of the stuff. ones I, I watch, like I can't sit in on them, but most of the ones like like yeah, I only ask the they only want people who take opposite points of views. It says I, I you know it's great that you want to come in and talk with me if you share the same point of view. It, it's kind of not as interesting. I want to talk to somebody. Oh, it's, well, it's also no, watching. There's, if it's a well, what are you going to debate about if you have the exact same point of view? I mean, right? Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just like, kind of share. I love you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. kind of, I, I do understand. I do understand that. I think um, I think the other reason I got into it was they talk about uh, there's this really screwed up space called the red pill. Uh, I, I don't really like it, but uh, I've heard uh, that. They, I've heard that term. I don't know what it is. But uh, let me think. It's like a menemist kind of thing. You know, there's a feminist, but it's the opposite. Be like a menemist, something oh, like that. Okay. Um, I used to be part of that community like ten years ago. What it used to be, and then uh, it just kind of became this really weird, toxic thing in my opinion hmm. but uh full of uh i don't know uh well how, how old are you uh adam i'm in my late 30s oh okay you're not okay i couldn't tell from your voice i was like are you phil's age are you my age like i'm in my late 30s too so um yeah yeah so it's uh, i, I kind of then you, you must have saw that community come up too then no i don't think i've heard of that the um what did you really? say really yeah, it's just a bunch. It's just like the opposite of a feminist. It's a menemist, basically. Oh, I've heard of that, but by different by different titles, like men's rights activists, and there's another term for it too that I've heard. That, uh, but yeah, there's I don't a think bunch. I've ever heard menemist. There's a, no, no. I mean, I mean, menemist. Uh, they don't even use that that much. They used it once, but but it's that's. I I feel like that's the simplest way to put it. Oh. Uh-huh. I feel. Um. Yeah, they have a bunch of them, right? They're like. MGTOW, there's a bunch of, there's a whole rabbit hole of that stuff, but uh, I I find it entertaining when they debate with those guys because, uh, yeah, those are fun. <laughs> <laughs> those are really fun, yeah. What do you like watching, Phil? Oh, I just, I, I've gotten into, cut. There's, there's about three or four that I kind of will, will, will watch that, that I enjoy, but I try not to get too deep into them. Um, just because it, it can be, it can absorb your time, and I try not to get overly absorbed into it. I like watching Good Trouble just because he's so sarcastic and he's funny. Yeah, um, yeah, he's, he's cool. one of the few that I'll, I'll put on. I still watch that one artist, um, the one I was telling you about. Um, I'm drawing a oh, blank on his name. Yeah, yeah, I forgot his name too. I, Chris, I, I see Chris Sava, I think. Yeah, yeah, I see him on uh, Instagram all the time. I, I don't watch yeah. his live, but I, I see his uh, stories will come up all the time. He's doing really good. That yeah. guy's doing really, really well. And and it's funny too. I don't think his art is like that good. I think his art's like okay. <laughs> like he, like like what's up? He's actually produced like animated a couple of animated films. He oh was, really? I didn't yeah, know him and his wife are actually producers and they've talked about meeting artists he, and whatnot. He gets, but, yeah. He, he gets stuff done, yeah. I mean yeah. I, I just meant like his regular watercolors are like they're good, but they're not like it really I think it's the format yeah. and just what a I guess the way he comes off is so chill and art teacher like. I don't know what it is. Yeah. There's just something about his vibe that like makes you want to keep watching this yeah. video. Yeah, I like. He's like my age too, and I'm like, really? Yeah, he's just about oh. the same age as me. You should reach he's out. In his okay. Early fifties. I know, and he looks like ten years younger than me. Does he? I don't know. I, I never really thought of his age to be honest, but I yeah. guess. Yeah, he's uh. He's got like a cool style to him too, right? He wears like vests and all this uh, stuff. Yeah, he's got well his house. His house looks like a hobbit hole and and Yeah. It's it's yeah, he's he does very well for himself, him and his wife. 
That was good. Is it wait? So he's going live every day on TikTok. You said. Yeah, for was a while. I don't know if he still does, but he would. Uh, he used to go live every single day uh, on TikTok. He would mm. go on for about an hour, hour and a half, and he'd do a quick piece. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I'm... Huh. Seems like a good idea. I feel bad. Yeah, I, couldn't, he... I feel bad. I can't go live with you guys on that because I was going to be like, I'll host a live if <laughs> and pull everybody. His... His wife will though his his wife will will sit and read the comments and she'll read out the questions and he'll answer while he's working on something. The camera's always pointed just down on on what he's working on, and okay. then you can hear his wife read the questions and then he'll answer while he's working. I'm surprised. Uh, I've seen other artists do that and not do well because like, even if it's good, mm. whatever they're doing, the, uh, yeah. it just seems kind of de detached. You know, people like seeing faces. <clears throat> That's what I was thinking of the two camera thing i think maybe because it's just it's just those like he still does other stuff and i think it's just those um those ones in the morning right where, where yeah he wouldn't but yeah for some reason he made it work well wow. um, yeah good for him that's uh yeah. I'm, I'm telling you phil do pick one thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> pick one thing and just try to follow through that one one yeah. thing that's uh that's what I need to do. I, I have trouble, like, I'll get so many multiple projects going, and it's like, I just end up, I do eventually end up getting it all done, but it's just, yeah, like, if I had a better ability to focus mm. on one thing and just see it through, man, I would be so much more productive. I've, uh, I've, uh, I remember I started using this app called Lucid. Have you guys used that at all? That rings a bell. I've never heard of it. It, uh, it's, it's, it's just like an org, it's like <clears throat> one of those, it's just a chart, like, app where you can put, like, uh, your task list, you know, and then you, you, I don't know. It's just good to organize. I don't know. It, it's, huh. it is what it is. It's just like a task list thing. But, uh, problem is I like, never open them. I have good notes and I used to like put in to do lists in there and then I never end up referring back to them. I mean, I don't refer back to stuff on my phone. I just feel like if it was like a chart like that and I print it mm -hmm. out, I probably, you know, I've, I've noticed I just look at it and I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, it needs to, to be out thing. somewhere up here. But, yeah. Well, okay. Hypothetically, I know we asked you this. Like I asked you this like three times. But what is what do you want your main focus to be, Phil? Get that website done first, or what? That's a good question. Um, yeah, that's actually kind of a good question. I, I see. I was even debating. Well, that's what I was was starting with at the beginning. Is I was debating whether or not to um, if it's worth my time getting a website or not right now because it costs. It's always cheap your first year, so I know I could start one relatively cheap. I could put one together and, and for like less than 30 bucks, I could have a decent website. It's, it's when you renew them every year that the cost goes up. So I want to make sure that if I do it, it pays off. <clears throat> so I, I'm, you know, I'm, so I've been debating whether or not do I want to start with that or just keep promoting myself on social media for now until I'm ready to actually start one. Um, they look up a promo code, but you know, like for, uh, is that oh, what you yeah. Mean? Yeah. They all do. Yeah. 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 They all have, they all have really great deals to start off with, but their first, your first year, you can get some really cheap stuff. It's the renewal after that. It's when it comes up to year two that stuff shoots way up in price. Hmm. GoDaddy was terrible for that. Yeah, super cheap the first year, and then it would be like a hundred and something the following year. I'm like, no. You could do Wix, right? Don't they host you for free? Or Wix is, is a lot. They're expensive. Really? Okay. They are, especially here in Canada. It's like fifteen bucks a month. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh yeah, there. I looked into it because apparently they're like one of the easiest to use, but boy, they're expensive. I was like, no. No, Squarespace I guess I is cheaper than them. Or... I haven't used it in years. I didn't know. I didn't know they, they cost. I don't know if that's uh, Canada only or. Mm. But I, Squarespace I were... is way cheaper, and uh, so is the other one. Uh, I can't think of the other one. It's the big one. What about Angel Fire? Angel, I don't, oh, I'm joking. That's, that's are, they, are they still around? <laughs> I don't. I don't think so. Yeah, I was like, it was twenty. It was like GeoCities. <laughs> yeah, what about GeoCities? <laughs> Get your moving GIF on there. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. Good times. Okay. I mean, I don't. I don't. Yeah. If it's thirty, how much is it? Like sixty bucks a year to have a site that's basic. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know how much. It is. I have to think too. Do I want to put merch on it? Do I want to have a store right attached to it? I would just say, I... fuck the merch. Go to <laughs> try to get into the Amazon thing first, and then that would yeah, be the best yeah. one. And then, yeah. Like, like I was looking through people's sites and they just like link to their Amazon or, or, or they'll have merch, but the merch won't, they won't need a store, you know, they just kind of put a merch page, but you, it'll click, you know, and you buy it on Amazon. 
like it'll almost work. forgot. Um, there is something I do have to start working on. Uh, mm-hmm. Adam, uh, yeah. um, I wasn't sure we talk about this yet or not. The sure, um, yeah. the thing thing. Um, the anthology. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> That's something I got to Cause I've sort of said I was going to do that. And I think I got to commit myself to that. So do you have a um, rough idea of how many you're planning to do star tales, right? Like a chapter. I'd like to, I really would like to, I think that would be a great end for that. I think if I was going to say, I'd pick something that I really want to dedicate myself to yeah. in the next world. I really, I've had star tales kicking around for like 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. I should really just, and it's always in my head. These little stories of these characters are always in my head. And I feel like, you know, everybody's kind of, people come bug me saying, oh, I thought that doctor or detective Gary thing was cute. You should do a comic. And I'm like, yeah, but I, I've kind of wanted to do Star Tales for so long. And I really should do something with that. So I, I want to commit a couple of pages of that to the anthology. And, um, uh, and maybe that's something I should really seriously look at. Um, but um, Enrique, if, if um, yeah. just so you know, this is something that we've we've uh, between Frank Salazar and Adam and uh, uh-huh. a couple of others, yeah, I'm talking about putting together a, an anthology book, and I think they've already you guys have already done this, haven't you, Adam? Like you've already done one, I think, a couple of years ago. Um, some of the oh, same people, so it's sort of a continuation of a previous um, okay. anthology series with the 100s and the 100 Days of Making Comics, but it's sort of it's sort of like. It is and it isn't. So mm. I don't know. Mm. Like we've we've I don't know. There's different people running. Like I was one of the um, kind of organizers on the first the 100s Life and Space anthology and an editor on that and helping right. with the case starter and so and had worked in there. But um, it's it's not like um, going to be the like number three in that series, but it may still say 100 Days of Making Comics or the 100s. But I'm I, that part is still kind of undetermined. Okay. But um, currently, we have the name um, "Ultimate Tales" for like the kind of head, like the head heading. Like if there's a second one, it'd be "Ultimate Tales Volume 2. Um, and "Galactic Fantasy" is the right. title. But yeah, we do have a um, Facebook group. Let me see. What is it? The group is called ultimate comics anthology if anyone is like um, trying to find out more information or wants to be involved mm. and i think what is frank it? and i might do a stream or a video somewhat soon like maybe the next few days and just kind of you know do an update and talk about some of the details and stuff hopefully i'm not working on <laughs> <laughs> that i my schedule is like that the worst time with it i'm always working you gotta, you gotta ask if the days stuff. off you gotta, you gotta ask for work off. You know, be like, well, yeah, I, I'll, I'm going to be going to like after this. This is the last week. I'll be doing four days a week, and then the following week, I'm going down to three. So, nice. but, Phil, I gotta go. Yeah. It's been two hours. I gotta eat. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, all right. Um, and, and sleep, yeah, because it was one. Okay. Um, yeah, but, I was, I was gonna throw just one last thing as, as Adam was saying. Um, yeah. If, if I can, my, my general idea that I kind of want to do once um, starting in the next couple of weeks is I, I would like to start making, I do want to start making regular YouTube videos again. It'd be nice if I can do at least mm. one a week, like fully edited YouTube videos, whether they're demos or instructions. I do mm. want to at least start putting that out. Plus on top of that, a live, I'd like to start doing weekly. So I can at least have two things going up on YouTube twice a week. And then I do uh, want to work on this anthology and I've been really kind of kicking around star tales again, starting that up. So between those things, and and I guess also uh, looking into, like I said, a, a website, if I want to start making merch. Um, so that's kind of all the stuff that's kind of juggling in my head at the moment that I kind of want to get going in the next, within the next few months. And it's probably YouTube uh, pretty quickly. You've done YouTube videos before. I'm yeah, like, and I, I enjoyed them. You know that? I miss doing them, and I'd like to actually get get back to doing that again. So, well, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> It'd be fun to do. I mean, you you, don't, you guys don't have to leave, you know. But I, mean, I gotta go, so I was like, I'm saying, but, like, yeah. But all right. But uh, yeah, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta sleep early as well. So, <laughs> but uh, all right, I'm gonna let you guys go. Okay. Adam, right, nice to meet you, you Henry. Henry. Have a good night. We'll Great meeting you. And I'll see yep. you sure. later, as always, Phil. All right, see you guys. All right. Cheers. We'll talk again. Yep. All right.
So uh, do you guys usually do you guys have like a format of how long you usually go for this? Um, you know what? It's normally about an hour and a half, but we had okay. a little bit of trouble getting started. We had uh, we Let's had some that. issues for like the first almost twenty minutes. We were having technical issues getting started, so it was um, we were late getting started. So yeah, uh, so that was all. Um, you're welcome to stay in and chat for a little longer if you like to. I don't at this you know at this point I don't I, I'm open. Mm -hmm. and so well, yeah, I'm up for it. It's um. The only thing I do need to do is just take about two minutes to, um, I just, I need to get a drink of water or something. My throat's really sore and hurts. <laughs> so I just want to oh, get yeah. a drink of water. Yeah, or something. I just grabbed a drink too. <laughs> yeah. Is it going to give me, if you can give me just like, you can stay on, I'll leave you on. I'm just going to go grab something. I'll okay. Grab sure. Yeah. yeah. I'll throw that up. <laughs> oh. I forgot the audio is still on. <laughs> oh, yeah. You got to be careful. You, didn't you just recently get a, what is it called, lava loop mic? Or... There we go. Oh, I, is that me? or He's still there. Oh. Sorry about that. Yeah, I had. I guess I must have clicked on the uh, the the playback on the video. Well, I was going to say, um, we lost, you, got, we you lost, recently uh, got like Big a, Bad um, Mama. What's up? I lost Frank. I, I wanted to reply to uh, what Big Bad Mama said here. It was just sort of hard to squeeze in. Um, but um, another Earth science fiction film. I did see that. Hmm. That sounds really familiar. Oh, 2011. That was a series. Science fiction film. I'm. I'm must have missed that because I didn't recognize that. I was kind of glancing at the uh, comments. But yeah, I was going to say, so Phil, didn't you recently get a, a microphone that kind of is like more attached to, you could just like walk around with it, right? Phil? Are you able to hear me? Hello? Hmm. Sorry, I was just reading about this. Uh oh, no, your your audio oh. you're unmuted, but I can't hear you. Sorry, Hello? I thought maybe you'd stepped That's away. Me? I don't know what happened. Um I you should should be able to hear you. Testing, testing. I 
Michael Canson. Uh, it must be. You should be. You should be oh, fine. I um, we were talking just a minute ago before I I stepped away, and then I just switched. I just switched something on OBS. I don't know what happened. Do you want to try and go out and come back? Yeah, I can try to do that. Let me see. I oh, I don't know what I I'm looking at the settings. I'm not sure. I mean, you can hear me, I guess. Okay. Whoop! I thought I heard something add to stream. Hello. There we go. Oh, that's uh -huh. oh, it's we're back to regular speakers. Okay, my I know my earphones disconnected. That's weird, but that's all right. I can speak to you out this way. I'm not sure what happened. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. we do have a little bit of an echo now, but oh, do you? Yeah. okay. Maybe I, not. It should because I I clicked on. I think it went away. Echo cancellation. Okay. Well. Okay, let me know if it does, because I can always maybe hook the earphones back up. That seems to help clear it. Because I thought it might be bounced back off my computer speaker. Did you look up that Another Earth film? I did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What, what did you find out about it? Uh, it was just a 2011 sci-fi film about a, a girl that discovers there's another uh, another duplicate Earth, and that she believes that there's a duplicate of everybody on that planet. The same events are taking place on, on that, that planet. Oh, wow. They're planning to try and go there. And that's, yeah. So that's, uh, it sounds very similar, very, very similar to, um, uh, to Doppelganger. Oh, so that is the name of another film you were talking, you're mentioning? Uh, Doppel Doppelganger, yeah, sorry, Doppelganger is um, the other title for uh, Journey to the Far Side of the Sun. Oh, okay. Hmm. Uh, yeah, that's that's. I always forget. There's two. Yeah, two titles. But it sounds very similar. It sounds. Um, it sounds almost the, the same. Cool. Yeah, I can't remember how, what led me to that. Like there was something that led me to that term, and then I like it was like a rabbit hole. People call it, mm -hmm. but um, I have I have one idea. I was so I was brainstorming on some ideas for the Ultimate Tales anthology because I I don't think I've it's been a while it's been a while since I've had a chance to talk to you. I think that mm -hmm. um, the main story that I was considering doing is I don't know. I, it's looking like it's not going to be within the rating of the of the book. So I'm kind of rethinking some ideas on what I might do. Oh. But one of, one of the um, ideas I've had for a long time is this kind of interesting science fiction fantasy thing where it's like these kind of similar worlds and like one thing affects the other type of thing. And okay, I, yeah, yeah. But I don't know. That project, too, is like I'm realizing... I don't know if the way it's structured, there's like a nice little chapter. You know what I mean? Like it does. I don't know if there's right. something that works as just like one little piece of the story. So I'm still kind of figuring out what I might do. Because, mm. yeah, I, I thought for sure because Hero Planet, I think I told you a little bit about Hero Planet, right? It might have been. Um, you remember I was like drawing dark wizards and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. OK. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyways, I, I definitely knew that I was going to need to tone it down to be in like a PG rating, but mm -hmm. as I was working on it, I was just realizing like, it, there's just no way it's like, it's just very violent in the dialogue. It just comes across as very corny to like replace oh, bad words and stuff, you know, oh, like it's yeah, very, yeah, yeah. I want it to be very like dark and gritty and violent, you know? So, right. I was just realizing, I don't, I don't know. If this is going to work, because yeah, because we were we've been talking about that with Vic for so much and wanting to keep it keep it clean and so uh, relatively clean. So yeah, if it's uh... I think it's more like it's not like I don't know with with comedy and stuff you run into like different things you got to worry about if you're trying to do a mm -hmm. lower rating. 
But with this, it's more just like almost like Pulp Fiction or something, you know, like where right. it I don't know if you can do a G rated Pulp Fiction and have it be it would just take everything away from the whole point of the whole thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't know, though. I'm 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 playing around. I have a lot of ideas that are within sort of a science fantasy space, you know, elves in space type of thing. So. Uh, yeah, I, cause when I, I, yeah, when I work on mine, I know, uh, yeah, I, uh, mine comes out of an idea that, um, uh, I wanted, I always said I wanted animated. Uh, yeah. I, I, I said it would always made a better series. So I'm, I'm sort of defaulting to do as a comic cause it's the only way I can kind of produce it right now. But, um, yeah, I it could, I could push it kind of over the edge, but I don't know. I guess I decided I wanted to keep a wider audience for it. Mm. So, um, I think the more more you lean towards a PG thirteen or whatever, it, it's it keeps a wider possibility of readership. So, depends, I guess, what you want, what you want to make. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, Yeah, I'll have to. Mm. So I was just kind of checking something here real quick to see if. Uh, no. Um. Yeah, I. I how are you feeling tonight, by the way? How are you doing? Uh, definitely better than I was. Hey, yeah, yeah. yeah. Through sort of a rough patch of health yeah. stuff. And just like my sleep was so screwed up. Like my, I get like, I always have like issues with my sleep and insomnia and stuff, but this was like, I don't know. It's all kind of interconnected. Mm -hmm. Whoops, I may have, um, what did I just do? Hold on. I just lost the window here for this. Hopefully I don't. Um... The window for what? Oh, it, it, this is on, on Chrome. It's through Chrome. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've just lost the screen for Google Chrome. Hmm. Um, it wants to, uh, it wants to quit, but the, the screen kind of turned invisible here and I'm trying to uh, I can open up a new window but the original window is is shoot I've lost my I can't it's funny that we're still connected mm -hmm. um, but the window just completely went invisible can I open StreamYard still? Can I still go there? You should be able to just go back into it. It might make a new... Oh, that's weird. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? I can now. It was muted. But then I've got an echo. One second. Hopefully this doesn't collapse every now. Okay. Well. It's it's still echoing. Oh my goodness! Oh, it sounds weird. 
I'm going to try and go out and come back. Okay. Sounds good. I was reading about this movie, Another Earth, that Big Bad Mama recommended. Looks interesting. I had never heard of this, I don't think. I was trying to see a little more information about the the sort of other Earth that they find. A mirror Earth. Hmm. I was trying to see, is it like in a different solar system or uh, in the same solar system? There we go. Sorry, I had to jump out and come back. Is everything working? Yeah, that sounds good. Now. Okay, perfect. All right. And that was really strange. Um, so what was the movie again? You said you were... I, I just kind of glanced at it. Um, I think I gleaned about the same amount of information as you did that it's an alternate earth, maybe like a mirrored reality type of thing. Oh, is this another earth? Uh, the big bad mama? Yeah. Yeah. Bad mama yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's actually, that's interesting. Like, I don't know. I guess I didn't really think about like looking into um, existing stories with a similar pre premise as that mm. type of thing. When I had this idea the, not the hero, not the hero planet story, but this other one that I had in mind. Um, which has sort of a dy dynamic like that. Is that dragon just something you're drawing, or or is that Star Tales? Related? Yeah, no, it was just something I thought I'd doodle because we were. I was doing a dog, and then I just I don't know. I kind of switched gears and went into this dragon for some reason. Cool, yeah. It's something I just I feel like a lot of your stuff. I see like a milk call uh, influence to it. Oh, is that? <laughs> or maybe. Um, it reminds me of something like from a certain era of Disney. Probably it's that's my my. You know when I went to uh, when I went to Sheridan College years ago, that was kind of our our training, and um, so everything that I do kind of still has that look to it. I wanted to get into Disney or Don Bluth or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, that was just my training, and it stuck all these years. I, I, I everything I draw. Um, oh, hey, Big Bad Mom is back. Is it? Do you know, I, I was kind of trying to do what I could from memory. I was thinking about Reptilicus, but I couldn't remember exactly what it looked like. And I didn't, I, I kind of didn't want to feel like pulling out reference. So I just thought, ah, just see what it, what it looks like. I know Reptilicus has these dangling things from the side of its mouth or something, but that's, um, have you ever seen Re Reptilicus, Adam? Or No, I haven't. It's a it's a Dutch kaiju film. I remember seeing it years ago when I was little. Saw it in the cinema actually on a little repertoire cinema. They ran it, and um, uh, it's this big long serpent like thing that that spits acid, uh, and um, uh, it, it's kind of it's kind of a it's kind of a dull repetitive kind of movie. <laughs> it's it's not terribly exciting, but it was kind of fun for me to watch. I liked it. Uh, uh, oh, did you? I, I saw it when I was like eight, nine years old. I remember we were living in Camp Borden way up north and my dad was still in the service. There was a little repertoire cinema that used to run cheap movies in the afternoon. Um, and they'd run like the big run movies at night. Um, but uh, the funny thing about this film is they, they sh shot it. They didn't want to dub it. They didn't want to have the cheap looking dubbing they did for like, like Japanese movies. So they got actors that could speak both um, their language and, uh, and English. And they shot everything twice. They shot it in English and in Dutch. So oh, they wow. have two edits of the movie and one is in Dutch and one is in English. That's interesting. I yeah. don't think I've ever heard of a movie doing that. Yeah. There is apparently... Um, when it came over to North America, I think they still fiddled with it and added some things to it. I think the the it spits acid, but I think that's only an American version. I don't think it did that in the in the Dutch version. I think they added that as a graphic over top. Um, hmm. uh, same thing. Apparently, there's a scene where it attacks a barn, and or sorry, it attacks a, a farm home. 
and there's a family inside and supposedly it eats the the father or something and, I, and it looks terrible it looks like this thing that was stuck onto the top of it and i think that was also added in the american version i don't think it was in the original but um they did they did add the acid later yeah that's what i thought yeah it's just this huge bloop that just sort of <laughs> it looks like it's glued onto the screen it looks terrible um i don't know why they did that but i guess to make it it didn't do anything. It didn't breathe fire or anything. And I guess it was maybe a quick, cheap way of making it look like it did something. Oh, Bill Pete is another artist that uh, your that style kind of reminds me of. Did you ever study Bill Pete's stuff? Bill Pete, that rings a bell. Um, he was a Disney artist, and he also did um, children's books. Is that right? Eh? I'll look up the name. I think like Sword in the Stone is the one that where you could really see a lot of his uh, influence. Is that right? Eh. Like that kind of sword in the stone style, I think is, is more kind of from Bill Pete. Okay. William Bartlett Pete, an American children's book, storytelling animator at Disney. Okay. I'll check some of the images here. I think a lot of Dumbo too is from Bill Pete. Oh yeah, okay. Oh neat. All right. Oh, I like it. Dumbo. Oh wow. Okay. All right. His birth name was Pede, P E E D, but he, I think he changed it because it sounds like the the past tense. Of oh, P O <laughs> Pede. It looks like pencil crayon almost. He's colored with. Yeah, I'm not sure what he uses because he has a very yeah. It's like, oh, I I that book right there I had as a kid. I love that book so much. Is that right? Eh? I don't even remember. Isn't that funny? I don't remember any of this. Yeah, I can see why why he worked at Disney. There's definitely. The pictures are too small, though. I can't. Oh, and my face is covering them up. Um, uh, yeah, I haven't seen a lot of that stuff in a long time. But it looks like you like drawing lions. <laughs> mm. The Wump World, that's cute. Oh, excuse me. Move it up out of the way here a little bit. No, the images are really small. I can't get a good Jennifer and Josephine. Uh, I like this this car he's drawn. Mm -hmm. But uh, this one you had, eh? The uh, I don't remember having any of his books so much as like they were just there was a whole bunch at the library. Oh, okay, so all right. Like the school library. But I, it's been a long time. From my memory, that book right there is like a big, thick book, and it's just mm. like, tells about his life and stuff. I think at the, at a young age, the idea that an artist was a person and that was like a job you could be like a fireman or, you know, some people are a doctor, some people are an artist right. or cartoonist or something like that had such an impression on me. Like, I don't know. Stuff's really great. I should see if there's a, uh... Something on Amazon. I'm going to switch back here for a second. I'm going to have a look on Amazon. I feel like there, I want to say there was like a Disney film with a dragon that he worked on as well. Pete's Dragon? Oh, maybe it was Pete's Dragon. No, I think that's Walt Kelly, actually. Okay. Walt Kelly that did Pogo. I think um, a lot of the yeah. look of Pete's Dragon is from Walt Kelly, I think. Okay. 
I think maybe it's a book that Bill Pete does that has a dragon. I can't remember. His, his autobiography paperback version is only uh, 24 bucks Canadian. And there's a bunch used from like 12 bucks. Sounds like a good deal. Oh, remind me, are you a big fan of um, Bill Watterson and Calvin and Hobbes? Uh, yeah, I've enjoyed their work. Yeah. I should never, I should know the funny thing is I never really, I never collected any books of it, but, but oh, okay. I really did like his stuff though. He's like, his, 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 yeah, I liked his, his inking style is like watercolors and backgrounds. And yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. That's definitely one of my like number one top favorites. My definitely my favorite comic strip, mm -hmm. but he has, he has a couple um, new books coming out this year, which oh. is kind of crazy. Like just out of nowhere, he was like, I guess he was like collaborating on this weird. It's like almost like a dark fairy tale thing. Okay. But I don't know. I'm I'm obsessed with Bill Watterson and Calvin and Hobbes, so it's like that's I, like I'm huge, so, huge exciting news. He really retired. What's that? I thought he had completely retired. Oh yeah, he retired in like 1995. <laughs> yeah, <I'm sorry>. but <laughs> he. A few years ago, he kind of popped his head up and did a couple interviews and did some like a little bit of stuff here and there. Like he did. Um, uh, a, a poster for a documentary and he did a um, poster for. Um, what is it called in? Uh, there's like a comic convention in France that he did a, a comic oh. for. OK. And he. um he he collaborated with the um, artist who does the comic Pearls B Before Swine. It was like a guest artist spot he did, but yeah, for for so there was like for a brief period there he kind of popped the setup and did and did a few things, and then mm -hmm. it's been a while since then though. Like he hasn't done stuff in a while, and just kind of out of nowhere, like this book is like coming out. And they're like reissuing Calvin and Hobbes in this like different like format too, like the other book. Oh, really? Yeah, they're so they're, they're going to put them out? They're going to re. Uh... Yeah, it's more like a portable. I think it's like a smaller version because they have like they have this huge collection of. Um, it's called the complete Calvin and Hobbes, mm. but it's like these. It's pretty these big thick books, you know. So I think that maybe that's the idea behind this one. That's like they're right. going to re-release everything, but more kind of a smaller, more portable size. I think. I remember when I was in uh, in college, one of our assignments was um, we had to take one of the comics, one of the comic pages, and. Um. The assignment was, imagine you're going to, you've been assigned to animate this page. Mm -hmm. um, so you're going to take, look at, look at the, look at the panels he's laid out. Um, and how you would take this and convey it to, um, uh, how, how would you animate, how would you convey this on the screen? Yeah. And you had to show a breakdown of the storyboards and um, and you had to do like a model sheet for each of them. You had to complete to, to stay on model to make sure it looked like it. And you had to do a full storyboard, full breakdown. And uh, yeah, it was actually kind of a fun assignment. I remember it was one where he was, he was, what was his, his, his space, Spaceman Spiff. Mm -hmm. And um he uh, he would jump out of his spaceship, and then he he there was a blob like alien that was coming after him, and then it turns out he was actually sitting at the table with his mashed potatoes. Yeah, yeah. And his mother stepped playing. I remember having to take that and break that all down. Oh, interesting. That was that was I remember that was a fun assignment. 
I should yeah, that's awesome. explain that. Yeah, some of Bill Waters and stuff is very animated. Like he would like, I don't know. You can see he like thinks like an animator sometimes. Like he would just do these little sequences where mm. it was more like not as much panel to panel. Sometimes it's just like a whole bunch of drawings in a row. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's an artist, I don't know how to pronounce this guy's name, John Kosht, maybe, who is a caricature artist um, that is collaborating with Bill Watterson on this new book. That have, have you ever heard of that artist? I don't know if he's very well known. Mm -hmm. That name doesn't ring a bell. I feel like I may have seen his work, but I don't. I didn't recognize the name. But yeah, it's kind of interesting. It's just like out of nowhere. Just like mm, a week ago or something, I think they announced this new book. I was trying to see if maybe I could find that one particular comic, but I can't. <laughs> yeah. So, wait, did you end up? animating that or you did like you did um you broke it down like well, if it was animated. yeah 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 no we would have taken too long to animate it but um something like that but no we just needed to show uh, i think the, the idea behind the assignment was to take comic book panels and how we would convert that over to to a storyboard okay because um, comic book panels you you can alter the sizes you can change the different sizes to what you want to tell a story and but you are kind of limited on the amount of space you have to kind of get it all within a page or within an amount of space so you have to have highlights of the action in each panel um but it's you can change the size of the panel depending on what you want what you want in it uh where a storyboard um you're a fixed size. Your your whatever your your screen ratio was television. It's three by four. Movie theater six by nine by nine. Whatever. You have that that fixed side right. size, and that's your your um, you're stuck within that that ratio. But you can use as many panels as you need to to convey something. You can show arrows. You can draw directions. Everything because it's it's more instructions. It's like a script. So you can. You know, even just somebody walking and picking something up or whatever, you can have as many panels as you need to convey that action. Where comics, it's the other way around. It has to be really limited on how how many uh, panels you're using on that. So it's um. Uh, so the whole idea was to oh, there it is. I found it. Uh, the whole the whole idea was was um. Uh, understanding the difference between. Um, storyboarding and, and doing a comic page and, and how you deliver the information differently. It, uh, I could blow that up. Oh, did you find it? I, I was did. looking. I, really... I found one that I thought it, you might have been talking about. but Yeah, let me see if I can switch back here. Oh yeah, that was that was the one I guessed. So yeah, nice. Yeah, that was. I remember this now. Yeah, I don't remember being in color, but we did remember we did have it. And I remember it because on the final panel right here, as he was getting caught, I thought uh, it'd be interesting to see this giant fork come down and stab it and scoop it away from him, and then um, and then it it pulls away. And it ends up being as a camera zips away, it ends up being this this thing on his on his plate. Oh, he's in the cafeteria. Nice. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just remember doing that. But see, even the direction kind of changes back and forth. You you can get away with that in a comic. You can have him like looking one direction here, then he's the opposite direction here. Yeah. So we're in I film, usually try to avoid that but... reading left to right. I think it works here because he's like escaping, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, for a comic, yeah, for the comic, it works here. But on film, you have to you have to keep working left to right. If it was if it is a storyboard, um, it has to uh, it has to be consistent 
in the direction. If he's going a certain direction, it has to remain that, that way. Otherwise, it feels like the camera's flipped. It, it's it's kind of hard to explain. But um, but for comic, you can get away with it. In something like this, you can you can you can get him any direction. You can move that around. But. Big Bad Mama says, wow, great caricatures by John Kosh, or however you say his name. Yeah, I think you might... I mean, I, that artist, too, like, if you just looked him up, I think you might enjoy... Oh, oh he, yeah, I've looked that up. Like he's, he looks really there. talented. But I'm interested to look more into his work, because it's like, who, what, like, what even happened? Like, how did these guys get together to work on this book, and what even is it like? sort of hmm. it's just sort of um out of nowhere and not it's just like a different like style and genre yeah. than what you might expect oh, excuse me pardon me i've seen some of his work before i remember this um this jack nicholson one here I oh yeah yeah see i feel like i've seen some of his stuff yeah I just didn't recognize the name. Bill Murray. Okay. Oops. It is Jimmy Stewart. Hmm. This stuff's a lot of fun. Oh, that's nice. With Conan O'Brien, he did like not just a caricature of his face, but the whole body. The whole body is, yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a very keen observation. The oh, yeah. uh, Conan's oddly long legs. <laughs> Yeah, these are really great. Wow. Does he have a little alien? Yes. <laughs> <It's> a little <laughs> alien. <next What>? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Weird. Yeah, his penciling is just uh, is fantastic. Oh, another good Conan. Yeah, yeah. Wow. This is the angle on this is really good. Mm. Three quarter down. Do you like that? This is, uh... oh, this is, um... this is a spoof. I think there's a famous um, Norman Walkwell painting that this mm. is loosely mm. based off of. Nice. Oh, there's the book in the black right there. It's called The Mysteries. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, that one right there. Oh, that's right. This is it. Or I thought it was, yeah. Oh, I see it. oh okay. All right. Oh, okay. In a fable for grown-ups by cartoonist Bill Watterson. Hmm. All right, that's something to keep an eye out for. Mm -hmm. I was considering doing a video about that, but I don't know. I just haven't been feeling great. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But both of those books, it's like exciting. They're going to do a whole series, so it's like an, I think they're going to release like a new um, the Calvin and Hobbes compendium thing. It's like I think they're going to put a new one out every year until oh, it's okay. like, All they right. do like the whole series. I remember when I was when I was really young, and I think I've mentioned this before, and I go to the library, a uh, little library <clears> down the street from me, and uh, I for some reason was into the peanut. Mm -hmm. I was reading Charlie Brown and they have these huge giant thick volumes. And this is going back to the seventies, late seventies. 
Hmm. I used to sign them out all the time and read them because it was stuff in there that I had, I had like never seen. Cause we used to get like the little pocketbook size books, right? Yeah. Yeah. This had everything in it, everything. And it just, it, it was, and some of them were like these really long stories he would tell. It was one mm-hmm. where like Charlie Brown had ran away and then he found another group of, of kids, a whole different group of kids. And he was trying to help their baseball team and trying to oh, interesting. baseball, which was just sort of kind of turning into a mess. But, but, um, I Do you know what era from. those are from? Like what time period it was? Oh, the, the books actually covered everything. They went all the way through. Oh, okay. Up until probably right up until uh, well, it was the late seventies. So it probably was right up until the seventies. Huh. Um, it was like yeah, late seventies, early eighties, I think. But we, yeah, I um, I used to love walking over and just, or I, I just sit in the the library and read them. Hmm. But. I don't know if I've ever seen like books like that that are like big thick volumes of peanuts. I love the really early stuff. Like, did you did you read like the like the first like just couple years or something? Mm. It's like a very different style visually. Yeah, they, yeah, he had a completely different design. Little folks, I think they were called. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, yeah, the um, they did actually start re-releasing them as volumes again just in the last few years uh, that they, they mm. put out put out volume sets again they would cover in they were in series of decades i think mm. 50s 60s 70s 80s 90s and it was a series of about 10 or 11 books it was a big uh, huge huge selection yeah and, um yeah i don't uh but even those have gone i don't think they're they're out of print now i don't even think you can get those anymore um Probably pricing. I wish, yeah. I kind of wish I, I had the first like one or two of the, if it's the same series you're talking about. I think it's like by Fantagraphics. Oh, okay. If it's the same one. I have one here that was on the making of um, uh, the Charlie Brown Christmas. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. The volumes, complete box sets, volumes eleven and twelve. Those are seventy nine bucks. Wow. Um, but I remember they were big hardcover books, and uh, the um, there was no image on the front. It was just sort of like. Um, impressed like it felt like there was supposed to be a thing like a sleeve around the outside but the sleeve was gone yeah and it was just like the the big those thick hardcover bindings that were kind of embossed Mm. um i'm trying to see if there's treasuries but i don't think that's oof Yeah, I'd have to kind of go digging around for a little bit, but I can only find one of them here from the 70s. Well, what was it you said, the ones you... Um, the, I think the newer series is Fantagraphics, if it's the same one I'm thinking of. Okay. Really nice design and stuff to it. I'm not the biggest Peanuts fan, Charles Schultz fan, but I love the early stuff a lot. Like, it would be nice to have those books, but man, this, I just, it's oh, yeah, kind of expensive. Yeah, <laughs> All those, like, I don't know, there's something like old classic comic strips like that. It's like, mm-hmm. we are sort of in a golden age of like actually collecting that and putting it in yeah. print, you know, but it's yeah. like, so many of those books are so freaking expensive that it's just, I don't understand how people, can collect the entire run of Terry and the Pirates or something. Through that, yeah. Like I think part of it's just... dollars or something must be. Oh, like... easy, yeah. To get that whole thing, yeah. I think um, 
I don't know, part of it's just my nostalgia, I think. It just I see stuff like that and I'm like, yeah, I remember reading it. Mm. And just but we had we used to collect a whole bunch. We used to get all the comic books we had. Um my dad liked Hagar. We had Hagar. Oh yeah. Um we had some Marmaduke. But the big two we had um The Wizard of Id mm -hmm. and uh BC were the two big ones that we had. We had a lot of those. And uh, it's a shame you can't you can't find those anymore. Because BC is still being done by his grandson. Oh yeah, still draws them. Yeah, um, yeah. That's another artist. Where I, I feel like a lot of comic strips like that. Like I just saw it. You know, I was reading the comics like late eighties, early nineties, mm. and a lot of those it was like in the fourth, fifth decade of the run, and they were just kind of, you know, a lot of it was just kind of phoning it in yeah so i didn't yeah. know like if you go back and look at like early bc and early wizard of it it's like johnny mm -hmm. hart was like you know he wasn't just this mechanical like machine putting out churning out a bunch of like i don't know the, the sort of later years of a lot of stuff it just becomes very kind of run of the mill but yeah his earlier stuff yeah. is a lot of those guys it's like the stuff that today is just kind of i don't know I mean, I get it. Like, I try to do a daily strip. I get, like, I can't imagine doing 50 years of a comic strip, what you would uh, <laughs> be be putting in there. But I suppose if that's, if that's all you did, if that's, um, you know, that was your job and you had to do it for a newspaper and that's what you did every day. You got up, you, you sat at your desk and you, you drew out these comics and you got paid for them, I guess. And you got, you know, depending on, on where they ran, how many newspapers. I mean, you could, time, you could make money <laughs> doing that. And you could get. Um... Well, what I'm thinking is like the restriction of if you're doing Hagar the Horrible or something or was BC, yeah. you know, maybe the first even 10 years, you're going to have a lot of exciting ideas in that, in the realm of that world, you know. But it's like once you kind of get to a point where it's like, okay, you've kind of done, you've told your, you said what you wanted to say. Yeah. You kind of start repeating yourself. It's like, what more can you keep like saying about these like prehistoric characters, you know? Mm -hmm. One thing that's yeah. great about Calvin and Hobbes is that he had, this is one thing I love about Calvin and Hobbes and it's brilliant is that he has a way around, a, around that where it's not just Calvin and Hobbes, you know, it's Spaceman Spiff, it's Stupendous Man, it's sure. Dinosaurs. Yeah. So it's like, it's almost like 10 different comic strips in one, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, if he has a science fiction idea, he can just do it. If he has a superhero idea, he can just do it as that. Yeah. That is like a good uh, formula against like the stagnation mm -hmm. of just the same characters. The whole point was just, he was telling gags. I think part of it is telling gags and there'd be, sometimes there'd be something political kind of thrown in there. It would reflect whatever the politics were at the time. So I guess, I guess as long as you kept up with, I don't know, that's somehow they managed to do it. They went for years and years. <laughs> hmm. I, I, um, I miss those old days when I remember in the eighties and we get the, the weekend newspaper and I think it was either either the Saturday or Sunday edition. I want to say it was the Saturday. Maybe it was Sunday. But um, the comics would be this full color booklet. And because we would get the the Toronto's was it was a Toronto Star or maybe it was the Free Press, one or the other. But we get uh, it would come with um, this little booklet inside. It have full color comics. There would be puzzles. Um, There'd be all kinds of stuff. There'd be little activities you could do in it. And uh, I loved getting those every Saturday morning. Wow. This is like a booklet, like a, with like a staple through it? Like a, um, yeah. Sort. Yeah. It was all in newsprint, but it was, it was fully stapled together like an extra little slide in booklet. Like a tabloid size or something? Yeah. It was, yeah. It was, it was smaller than the, yeah. It was about so big. It was smaller than the newspaper. Oh, and it, wow. was, it was put together like a little mini book. And that would be, that would be kind of slid into the, 
into the the news. That sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah, we get those every week. They're in full color. Wow. I should. Uh, I probably asked you, but is there any um, distinctly like um, like Canadian comic strips that you would have like only gotten over there that you can think of? Um, I have to kind of rack my brain a little bit because. Um, you know, th there might have been something in it, but I, it didn't click with me at the time that, that this was, oh, this was just a Canadian one. Um, mm -hmm. There were a few. I know for sure there were a few. Um, uh, especially there was definitely a lot of political cartoonists. We had a lot of political oh, yeah. cartoonists. Um, Uh, Herman uh, Herman was internationally known. He was from Canada, um, but he got he got known internationally. Um, I'll have to kind of dig. Some oh, isn't it, um, for better or for worse? Isn't she from Canada? I think she was as well. Yeah, for better or worse. I'll say Lynn Johnson is her name. Yeah, yeah. I was just actually having a look here. I was kind of looking up Canadian comics. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. See if when they're popular enough, they get kind of they get kind of printed internationally. So mm -hmm. it's from Collingwood. All right. Jeez, that's a little little tiny place. Oh, Robin Hood and Company. I remember that. They Wait. So know. are you? Remind me. Are you near French Canada at all? Or you? Yeah, yeah, we're not. We're not too of... far. Um, we're not ourselves. We're not. But we're in Ontario, and Ontario is pretty pretty fixed english um we're we're pretty english speaking here and we have french on our products but we don't oh. we're not really bilingual but just i could you could get into a car and drive six hours north and be in montreal okay we're not that far um we're only about five hour drive from from the border where i am right in, in the toronto area of montreal and in in ontario mm. so that's pretty close uh, so we're not too far. Um, um, new uh, New Brunswick is very bilingual. Um, everybody speaks both French and English. Um, but Quebec, boy, if you go to Quebec. Um, unless you, if you go to Montreal, Montreal is very, um, uh, it's, it's bilingual Montreal itself, uh, because they get so many tourists from all over. I mean, mm. the primary language is still French, but it's, um, uh, you could go there. If I went into, walked into a store and I wanted to talk to somebody to get some help or something, it'd be, it wouldn't be any hard to get help in English. But as soon as you go outside of that, you go to some little, very little small town or very, you know, very small, small city or town outside of Montreal. You try speaking English, they get annoyed. <laughs> hmm. They uh, they don't like that. <laughs> so that's why I say every time we when we go to, I need to brush up on my French again. I've, I've forgotten pretty much almost all of it. Um but um, yeah, it's because uh, I was actually um, I was I was born in Quebec. Actually, my my folks just happened to be stationed there when when they were in the service. Oh yeah. But they were waiting to move. They were just waiting for me to pop out so they could move, and then we moved to um, Saskatchewan. But I I was born in Quebec though. I was like, oh, you're French Canadian? No, I just I just happened to pop out there. We we yeah. left right after. <laughs> but when I, I had to renew my birth certificate, that was a huge pain in the ass to get that. But because of course I was born in this little city called Saint Jean, and it um and the hospital itself has moved. They've torn down and, and moved to a different hospital. So my records are there, but when I had to renew my birth certificate. Uh, I had to I had to get a new one made up 
fortunately, my dad was alive at the time because otherwise it had been near impossible for me to get it. But my dad was alive and just happened to know enough French that he could phone them and help get the arrangements. But otherwise, I'd have had to gotten somebody who could translate for me because I, I didn't know enough French to communicate with somebody there. And they won't really help you if all you know is English. They're kind of... Um, they're they're kind of stubborn that way. <laughs> mm -hmm. What does something pop up? These don't show when I click them. They're not showing up. Do you see Adam? When I click I on them, do you? Mm -hmm. Mine disappear for some reason. I'm not seeing the little white outline. Um, um the Anna Swan Museum. That we went through Nova Scotia. Um and I re I don't think we went to that one. I've heard of it. We talked about it when we took a trip through there. Um Yeah, we never did. Yeah, I, I we we had, I remember we talked about it and we looked at it. We ended up going somewhere else. We saw, I think, like the 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 um, Nova Scotia Parliament Building. But um, I'm just looking at it here. Yeah, we never did go there. I, I it would I think it'd be really interesting. I would love to see it though. One day we're gonna go back. We're gonna go back to Nova Scotia. I really I, I loved it there. And uh, yeah, I would, I would definitely go check that out next time we go. Where is that located? I can get the address. I don't know if you can hear that. They got the plow out there. We got snow today. There, I can hear it. Yeah, it was I was walking through, not a blizzard, but it was like the snow was just coming down hard to the post office. Oh, jeez. I guess, yes. Uh, I guess technically, yeah, earlier today, I guess. Well, it's loud. I wonder if you're doing the sidewalk. It's really loud. I can't hear it. If Oh, yeah. Yeah, there is this way up there near New Glasgow. Yeah, because we come down not far from there. We took a, we took a, uh, some friends and I took a road trip back in 2018. And we went up through uh, New Brunswick. We went all the way up to Prince Edward Island. Mm -hmm. And then we turned around and came back down to Nova Scotia. Um, and, uh, we went, we wanted to go to Halifax and we also saw one of the, um, the museums there that had some artifacts from the Titanic. Oh, nice. Dartmouth and Halifax. Yeah. That was interesting. Save this. How's uh, work going, folks? Um, it's it's okay. It's it's been it's been the same. Um, same issues you were dealing with before. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I was telling Enrique that um, Enrique earlier that I'm going to be. Um, uh, they are going to be giving me an extra day off. Uh, oh, nice! I didn't have like an extra day off for a week, so I didn't. That's good. 
I'm very slowly trying to cut back and um, I'm kind of slowly moving into a kind of a semi retirement kind of thing, <laughs> but because mm. um, I don't want to work anymore if I can. Uh, so, yeah, so I'm, um, uh, I won't be going in three days a week. I think it'll just be Thursdays, Fridays, and Sundays uh, will be my only three days. Well, that's an improvement at least. It is. Yeah. I'm, um, I think next week is the last, is the last week where I'll have to work on the Monday. And nice. uh, we're just kind of training a couple of people and then, um, then starting the week after I can, I'll have more time here at home and I can do more. So. Well, that sounds good. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. That's why I've been, I had three days off this week because Monday was, um, it was a holiday here. It was a Canadian holiday we have called family day. Mm -hmm. Some dumb holiday. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> you were telling me a little bit about, it was just kind of like, they wanted another holiday, so they just made it up, right? They just did it, yeah. <laughs> yeah they just I mean, family day, it sounds like a positive thing to do a holiday. It with. is, I guess, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, yeah. But um, it gave me an extra day. So it gave me an extra day off. I guess I can't complain. So I am. Um, is that the general feeling about family day? Is just like, what is this random made up holiday? Yeah. Yeah. I guess I didn't realize when I looked it up, Alberta has had it for years and years. How long has it been around for? Uh, Alberta itself, I think, have had it for, I think, was it 20, 25 years or more? Um, mm -hmm. Let me just have a look here. It was, yeah, uh, they've had it for... Um, oh, I can't find it. I know they've had it for a long time, and then it became became kind of an international holiday uh, around, oh, it was, was the early 2000s, somewhere around between okay. 2000, 2005 in that range it became. Uh, so we've had it for, for a while. Um, uh, first celebrating so 1990. Who decides wow. there's a new holiday? Like the president or what, got, like who... Or you guys don't have a president. You guys have a yeah, president. It would be the prime minister. Yeah, it was. It was. I guess it. It gets similarly to the U.S. I mean, they, they, it gets motioned in the House of Commons, and they vote on it and decide to have it, and 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 they just they just kind of put it forward. So, because huh. I remember there was a, a friend of ours when I was living with my friend Dawn, and and she was working with another girl who had just started her own business. She she had a costume business. She had a costume shop, um, and uh, uh, it was a struggle for her to get it started. She was going in like every single day. She was in there doing orders and ordering stuff. And I remember Dawn was helping her, but when Family Day came up. Um, she was really frustrated by it because she, she only had like two employees working there, <clears throat> but she had to give them the day off, but still had to pay them because by law for a business. You, you have to, if the, if they worked their, uh, if you work your, your last shift, uh, your last scheduled shift, your holidays, you were, you were paid. So she had to close the store, but still had to pay the, her employees. So it's the same thing with with like the YMCA. Even it's a holiday, yeah, um, so even though I wasn't working on that day, I worked my scheduled shift before and after. I have to start so like tomorrow's my next shift after family day. So I work it tomorrow and I work it on time. Um, that I'm paid for. Uh, I'm paid for that holiday. Cool. So I don't know if they have that in the U.S. or not, but. Um, but uh, I remember that she was really angry about that. <laughs> she had to pay her two employees for a minimum of, I think, I think it has to be like minimum of four hours. Mm -hmm. She was really upset about that. But um, yeah, whether it's a small business or a full corporation or a full, um, I am tired tonight whatever it's it's you have to you have to pay i think the only one that's not is if it's a 
government. No, I think they do too. For sure, they would. I mean, there's only a few exceptions, but because you guys just had President's Day, didn't you? Um, if we did, I did not notice. <laughs> was it President's Day recently? I, I thought I had heard that somewhere. Maybe it was. Yeah, I don't know. Well, do you need to get going, Phil? Uh, I probably will in a few minutes. I was okay. just looking at one other little thing here to see if I could find it, but it's um, it's not that important, really. So did you have to? or? Oh, I'm just probably going to. Well, I know Oops, you're going to. I lost your audio. Oh, can you hear me now? Hello? You, oh, you one second. I lost the audio here. Sorry, I'm sorry. The I lost the audio for a moment. Can you hear me now? There we go. Yep, I can now. Okay. No, no. I I just wanted to see because you you said you're retired and you gotta get, you gotta work. But I and I do. I do yeah, fortunately, I don't work till till like six o'clock. So I still oh, okay. But I think I'm gonna. Yeah, end I remember. Up. Is that uh, when you usually good. work? Or is I'm that, sorry. Is that a new? Is that an? Is that new or is that when you're usually going to work? Yeah, for, for during um during the week, it was it's normally closing shifts. I've always been six, six okay, o'clock, yeah. midnight is my shift. Um, Sundays, uh, I work um, Sundays. That's the only one that's in the afternoon because they close earlier on the Sundays. So I'm usually three to oh. seven on Sundays. But through the week, though, it's it's six to close. So so it'll just be Thursdays and Fridays I have to worry about. So, but then. Nice. Yeah, let me just get something cleared up here. I got all these like windows open. <laughs> well, I appreciate you guys having me on. It's cool to to I mean yeah. I'm in, in your a stream with you, but to do the art block is I, a little different. Yeah, I, I feel a little bad because I did actually want to. Uh, I, I lost track of what we were doing, and and um, I did kind of want to talk to you a little bit, a little bit, just kind of about the, the book. But um, oh yeah, we can do that too because I got it. I, I did really enjoy it. Thank you <laughs> again. Awesome, I'm glad you. Oh, yeah, like it. Actually, the one thing that really made me laugh was when he was calling his doctor, and it was a spider answering the phone. Yeah, and I think it was just in the next room. I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's supposed to be like he's pretending, but that, that, wait, oh, that's yeah. what made you laugh the most. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was like, went to call his doctor, and it was not like the weird the room. Room. It was like... just so absurd. I was just. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I like that story. So that was funny. Yeah, it was it's good, though. I'll, um... Yeah, it's interesting that you, like, you're starting with the second one without seeing kind of the first one as much. So, but that's good. Like, that's the good stuff. Like, I, that's my personal favorite. Like, I don't think that I'll do anything that will be like that to me is like the quintessential, like, toad road right there. Is that's it? it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um. So, so is there previous like setups for some of these? Cause I just feel like, like, like opening up comics or like, like a random, whatever I was telling you about that, that thing of comics, right. And, the, and it's just all this random stuff, but it's, it's um because there's some things like are all these i guess these characters aren't really connected there's just sort of um i mean most of it is, is um yeah many of a lot of it is just like episodes or just similar to like a comic strip where it would be like some of those are adapted from different formats that I did before. So like some of it was like more like a, a Sunday comics format and some of it was just. Oh, okay. Yeah. I would do these like little three page things that, and they would kind of add up to a longer story. Cause who, oh, cause is Wiener boy a friend of his then? <laughs> Wiener boy doesn't, Wiener boy has never interacted with Ted. Oh, okay. They just kind of, but I mean, in in my head, they live like they live on Toad Road. Like they both live close together, but they their worlds have not really not crossed. Uh, oh, is this? It's just because it was interesting. There was there's this random thing with Wiener Boy thrown in there once in a while. Yeah, yeah, he's kind of like the secondary, like he's not the main character, but right, sort of always kind of there. 
see it's, it's open up and i saw the part with the, the bearded woman i thought oh there's the bearded woman you were talking about uh, <laughs> yeah some of that a couple of those stories are more like from several years ago that and i just like re kind of printed them reprinted mm. them and the, a lot of that is more kind of recent but yeah i did that a lot with those comics where i um i went through like earlier renditions and then i kind of went back and redrew it like and then a few years later, I went back and redrew a lot of stuff. Oh, okay. All right. Because some, so of, the some of those stories are from, you know, all the way back to like the late 90s, early 2000s or something. Oh, okay. Um, I was going to say, because in some parts of it, um, like the artwork feels stronger in some areas. Than in yeah. Other. Like I can see how, okay, so if you redrew it. Um, like, I love this little thing in the middle here. You've got the sketch gallery. Um, that's really great. Just these, all the different emotions and, and poses and that. It, uh -huh. uh, it reminded me of, um, um, oh, what's his name? He, when he did the, um, the, for animation, uh, we learned about the flower sack and, mm -hmm. uh, uh, one of it, it was either one of them that, that wrote the uh, the, the book, nine old men Disney animation book. Um, oh god, I'm drunk. My brain is just having complete brain fart on their names. Ollie Johnson or Frank Thomas or Ollie Johnson. One of the two did the famous flower sack that had all the different emotions, and it would be jumping, mm -hmm. jumping. And it would show all these different positions, and so whenever they made model sheets after that, you kind of had to think about the flower sack in your mind, and all of these these just reminded me of that. Uh, oh, interesting! Yes. All these little, yeah, this is all the different Thank poses you. and expressions and everything. It was just, yeah. I try to use the, like, the traditional classic cartooning principles, but mm -hmm. uh, more through like the Spum Spumco Ren and Simpy school of cartooning, and then yeah, you know, I've looked at, I've studied some Disney stuff, but and Spum the Spumco artists they teach some Disney stuff too. But a lot some of pages you've got uh, on some pages, like I noticed you've got the um, uh, the the dot. What do you call it? the dots? The uh, the tones. Yeah, yeah. Like screen tones. Yeah. Yeah. So some yeah. of those. Um, so the ones with the dots like that are from er an earlier time period when I was coloring um, on the computer. Okay. And that was kind of what I was right. going for. Like a dot, especially like because at the time. Um, a lot, of, a lot of that content was just—I was just kind of posting it on Facebook or showing it, you know, like. Mm -hmm. So if it's on the screen, I especially wanted it to look more kind of like. I wanted the context to be that this is to be, in print, you know. This isn't some like web comic or something. Right. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, definitely... yeah. I really like that look. I was planning on re drawing and recoloring all that stuff but i was like ah, i'm just gonna keep this like i don't know it's it's sort of like no i like it it has a lot of things that i wanted to change but i also really like it I was like one of the things where i got to a stage where i was like okay this is like passable you know this is like publishable yeah. so i don't know i probably should do that more where i just put earlier content in there without completely redoing it multiple times yeah I would have been. Is like, there a is there a Ted's birthday coming, or is that? Yeah, yeah. So that is the um, the third issue. That's the main story of the third issue, which is like going to be a longer story. I actually have it drawn out already. I just need to. Um, oh, like it's not inked and colored and stuff yet. So yeah, that's my next. Okay. Uh, is that the one? Uh, remember, you're drawing the parachuting. So that is a well i'm i'm deciding what i at one point i was considering so i want to do a space issue mm -hmm. and I, at one point i was considering maybe i'll just put like the space stuff with the birthday stuff and just do one issue because i may not have enough like space related content okay but the parachute the parachute one is a space story oh all right okay so i'm undecided on whether i want to um kind of combine because I did that for that the issue that you have, that really was a combination of two. I was planning that as two different issues, and I just decided, eh, I'll just combine two and three and put it all into one one thing, and it'll be better. 
So I may do that again. Right. Because the first issue is only 16 pages. So that was like more than twice the pages of the first one. I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, yeah, Ted's birthday is if you enjoyed this issue, I think you know, you'll like the next one. It's, and it's a little okay. more like the first one is a lot of just like little short kind of two page things and one page things. And then that issue, I kind of was getting into a little bit longer stories and I'm building towards these like longer stories where Ted's birthday will fill up like almost a whole issue or something. Right. So I mean, like kind of feature. But I, but I may do like two of those. I may do like two longer stories like that yeah. if I combine the space stuff. So, honestly, like this is sort of ridiculous, but I, I have been look. So remember when I was working on that stuff, I was working on like the parachute thing. And um, I was like doing these like these like this like concept art and stuff and like sketching it all out. I don't know where the hell I put that stuff. I've been looking all over for it. And I did renovations and I moved a bunch of stuff. And like since that time period, I have not been able to oh, find shit. it. And it's like it's been stalling me from making progress on it because it's like I don't want to just like redo that. But I, yeah. I cannot find it anywhere. It must have just like wound up in some random box that got stuck somewhere. But I don't know. But hopefully I can find that and, and get that going. I was considering maybe doing like a... um a toad road space thing for the anthology but it's another thing with the rating i just it's unlikely that anything from toad road comics is gonna fit in a kind of family friendly rating yeah it's gonna just a little just a little above um yeah <laughs> the first issue though is a lot more tame like there's there's it kind of progressively gets more mature I'll have to try and figure out how to get get the first one. It's only because the the shipping was such a ridiculous price that I didn't I held off on getting the first one because it just it was just so. Well, if I'm sending, yeah. if I at some point because I'm also f formatting that monkey comic, monkey my monkey monkey comic. Mm -hmm. So maybe um, like for example, like if I'm sending you, I think it won't be nearly. It's not going to be way more to just like if I sent multiple things like next time i send you something if you haven't got an issue of total comics number one i'll just try to send you one because i think yeah it's really the all right, all right. I, I know the shipping's really expensive i know it's pricey I, but I, if it's like twice as much for shipping then yeah that'll be i don't i don't yeah. think that the, it's not so much the weight it's just getting it it's just sending anything to canada is going to be expensive it's yeah unfortunately it's just yeah I don't know. I, there, was, there was no a workaround around that somehow, but yeah. Because really, all I have to do is, I don't know. I guess it's like in my mind, I don't want to do it. But this stupid numbering the pages, like if I just, it's like sit down for twenty minutes and do it real quick, and I'll be done. But it's like, uh, I don't know. I know it's. <laughs> it's like focus. Like we were talking about time management. One of the things I struggle with is just, is just focusing and and. Yeah, like controlling my attention span to just sit down and focus. Yeah. On and do it. So that's kind of the top of my list is to get that, get that formatted. That's yeah. I think if Figure I what I'm start... doing for the anthology, that's almost a concern when I start too is keeping all that organized when I start. Mm -hmm. I know that's it's kind of a it's a pain in the ass when people have worked on comics. Mm -hmm. Just empty this. That'd be exciting yeah. to have that monkey monkey comic all as like one book. I think it's a good format for mm -hmm. for just like getting it to people. I was considering reprinting each individual mini comic and assembling them and it's just like oh i don't know i'm glad that i didn't do all of that it's just too much to do i think uh 
Oops, over here. I think I am going to have to call her because I am okay. starting to feel groggy and tired. I'm like, yeah, I really should go to bed. It's like 3.30. Three thirty. <laughs> Thanks but, again uh, for having me on. Yeah, um, oh, it's so fun having you. So I definitely want to go check out the the book review that you did too of uh, mine and Frank's. And yeah, I just kind of briefly covered the three that I've got. There was there was Frank's, Jacob's apartment, and and yours, Toad Road. So. Awesome. I just did a quick, it was like a 10 minute thing that I briefly went over all three and I kind of didn't thought it would spend more time. I thought it was going to take longer than that, but um, whoops, that's been up all that time. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I had, um, uh, yeah, it was just a really quick, quick thing before I started the show tonight. So, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, all right. Well, I'm glad you're doing better. It's good to, good to hear from you again. So we'll, yeah, we'll definitely, too. definitely be in touch. So. All right. All right. Good. All right, Phil. Have a good night. You Talk too. To you Take soon. care. All right. Bye. Good night.